Well, Matt Nagy has done a fantastic job his first year as a head coach in this league, and he's got the Bears atop the NFC North at eight and three. A game and a half in front of the Vikings. They already beat them already a couple weeks ago. Mitchell Trubisky out again with that shoulder injury. So Chase Daniel will get the start at quarterback for the second straight week. At the bottom there, you see Alex Tanney. Why don't we put him on the inactive list? He's the Giants' backup quarterback. And that man, number 17, is active for the first time all year. That's Kyle Lawletta, the rookie from Richmond. But a lot of talk around these parts about maybe when he would get a chance. I don't know if he's going to be today, Charles, but I'll tell you, he took an awful lot of warm-ups in pregame. We'll see. Giants won the toss. They deferred, and here we go. From Northern New Jersey as the kickoff is fumbled by Mizell, and he picks it up, and bad field position to start for the Bears after the miscue. So first, the quarterback of Chicago. We told you Trubisky is out again, and here is Chase Daniel, who did a wonderful job on Thanksgiving. He is your ideal backup, a guy who understands his role, and understands that he has to be ready to play on short notice and play well. And he has plenty of confidence in himself. And it showed on Thanksgiving Day in Detroit. We threw some passes that a lot of people would say weren't very safe, but they were very effective. They'll give it to Jordan Howard, and Jordan Howard goes nowhere. Haley come in from the secondary to help on the tackle. For more on Chase Daniel, down to the sidelines with Pam Oliver. Hey there, Kevin. Well, Chase Daniel, he's had a nine-year career that can best be described as that as of a journeyman. We're talking about stops in New Orleans, Kansas City, Philadelphia, and along the way, he's made some pretty famous friends. All of them reached out to him after that big win on Thanksgiving over the Lions. We're talking Drew Brees, Alex Smith, Carson Wentz all called him to wish him well and congratulations on that game. Intercepted right off the bat by Ogletree. Touchdown. What a start. Alec Ogletree. Two weeks ago, Ogletree got a pick against Tampa Bay that bounced off of Janoris Jenkins. This time, he needed no help. Moving forward like he was blitzing, the ball goes right into his chest, takes it right there, grabs it. This is really excellent hand-eye coordination. Ball hits off of his shoulder, doesn't panic, stays with it. Now watch the straight arm against Chase Daniel. Now he turns into what he was in high school, which I'm quite sure was a running back and takes it into the end zone for the initial score of the game. What a start for the Giants. Stuffed Jordan Howard on first down, interception touchdown on second down. The defense gets the Giants activated. My gosh, Pam just got done telling all the congratulatory texts he got from the quarterbacks that he's played under, but that is about as bad a start as you can imagine. So Ogletree, the second pick six of the year for him. Rosas will come on for the extra point, and it's up and good. So the Bears come in, they've won five in a row, and the Giants Land a sucker punch right off the bat with an interception return by Ogletree. And right out of the gate, you see the second pick six in the last three games for Ogletree. We mentioned the one against Tampa Bay and the one here. James Betcher, the defensive coordinator of the Giants, is known as a very aggressive play caller. Likes to blitz, likes pressure. The first two snaps of the game, he brought pressure against the Chicago Bears. So here's Ogletree. And watch him at the line of scrimmage. He sees the play and doesn't continue to get upfield, which is very smart on his part. He doesn't run himself out of the play. He ended up staying right there, got his hands up trying to affect the passing lane, and got even more than he bargained for, which was an interception and six points. So there's James Betcher, the D coordinator, and we just saw the shot of Chase Daniel. This is only his fourth start in his career. What is his mentality on bouncing back after a play like that? Hasn't had a lot of experience with it thus far. Here's Mizell, fumble the first one. Doesn't even get across the 10 on this one. Great coverage by the Giants special teams. And so, a couple plays in, a pick six, and you're right. Now, Chase, Danny, think about it. He's been in the league, Charles, for so long. He, Ninth year for him, only his fourth start. He's never started back-to-back -back games. 
And the irony is, coming off a game he played so well, he said this is only the second time I've actually had a full week of prep. Yeah, he also talks about how he has to mentally exhaust himself every week to get ready in case he has to play, but often isn't able to expend that energy because he doesn't get to play. Now he's doing that. Let's see if all those years of experience will guide him through the rough patch he just experienced. What's that? They go eye formation. They pitch it to Tariq Cohen, who looks for a seam on the left side. There's not much there against this Giants defense. This Giants defense, they're, they're a combination of young and even the guys that are a little older, they, they just haven't played a lot. So they're trying to find their footing. A lot of guys getting their first real playing time consistently every week. Ogletree has been the leader. They brought him over for the Rams for that reason. They needed a leader in that room. They certainly did, and the leader back deep is number 21, Landon Collins. You'll see him all over, either guarding Tariq Cohen or tight ends. Here's the fake. Get it near side. It's Gabriel, the speedster, and he is out across the 20, and good enough for a Chicago first down. Taylor Gabriel has a penalty on the play, too. Far side of the field. And the initial sign is might be coming back. Yeah, I think it's going to be an illegal shift against Chicago. Clay Martin is our referee today. Illegal shift. Offense. Number 15 never got set prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. Second down. It's on Josh Bellamy. Bellamy, that is. So that's Matt Nagy. We had some fun with him asking him about his last name yesterday. He said, well, it kind of depends on where in the country you're brought up, what your accent is. Now, he was... Brought up in Pennsylvania, born in New Jersey. He said, I pronounce it Nagy, like A, Nagy. So that's what we're pronouncing. But he doesn't mind if people call him Nagy. He says either <laughs> way is fine, but Nagy is what his family likes. After the penalty, here is Daniel to throw it. Knocked away nicely. Janoris Jenkins. And it'll bring up a third down and long. Look at Jenkins. You see him looking inside to see the snap, and then he takes all of his concentration to number 12, Allen Robinson, until he realizes he's at the break point of his route. Then he takes his, his attention back to where the ball was coming and knocks it away. As aggressive as the Giants have been, Kevin, early in this game, see if, if they read blitz, they might go to a screen here. Third and 14. Pressure coming. They set up the screen. Cohen looking for a block. And he has nowhere to go. Kerry Wynn was there first. And what a start for this Giants defense with a pick six and then a quick three and out. Everyone is feeling the excitement that's being generated early on the Giants defense. You notice it's going from player to player to player. You've called a number of different guys already, Kevin, who have made plays for the Giants defense. It's starting to spread throughout them. Let's see if their offense can carry forward the momentum. Jawill Davis back to return for New York. And he'll let this one bounce. And that's not a good decision. This is going to bounce an additional 10 yards for the Bears all the way down to the 25-yard line. So instead of a fair catch call there, it turns out to be a 65-yard punt. Well done by the Bears. But it's the Giants off to a quick start. Their offense on the field next. Eli Manning has had a good statistical season here for the Giants. I mean, you see what he has done. Best in his career in a couple of those categories. And today is 226 regular season start for New York. As he hands it off to Saquon Barkley, who has had just a sensational rookie year, Charles. Third in the league in scrimmage yards, fourth in the league in rushing. He's been everything the Giants thought he would be. The offensive line, big concern for New York this year. It has changed multiple times. It's been an issue from day one, blocking up front, and today against this Bears front, that's going to be a huge challenge. And they think this is the most solid this offensive line has been in this season. Let's see how they can handle the number one defense in the league. Second down, a little delayed draw, Barkley. And he gets up to the 30, so it'll bring up a third down and five. Eddie Goldman was there. Well, Saquon Barkley came in. There's a lot of talk around here. Should the Giants have taken a quarterback when they took Barkley? I, I would say the way he's performed, it's, he's justified that pick. Yeah, I know people keep talking about you have to have a quarterback, and I get that. But he's been the best player in this draft class. I don't think that's a bad thing to have on your team. See, so he's now got the Giants' rookie rushing record, too, by the Hall of Famer Tuffy Lehman's third down. Manning pressure in trouble. Ball's up in the air. 
And it is incomplete. Anytime the ball is in the air with these Bears who've got six defensive touchdowns, you kind of hold your breath, but it falls to the turf and the Giants will punt. The coverage had to have been good downfield because Eli Manning had plenty of time to survey the field and find someone, but he feels the pressure there and pulls the ball away and then gets nothing on it, and it ends up hitting his offensive lineman. As you noted, Kevin, almost popped up there for a Chicago Bear to grab. Riley Dixon will punt it away as Tariq Cohen back to receive leads the NFL in punt return yardage this year. Good kick. Cohen from the 16. Going backwards. He gets now some momentum coming up to the 30. Well, they call him the human joystick for a reason. That looked like it was a bad decision, but he turned it into a nice return of 15 yards. Making people miss. That's what number 29 does. Bears are down, but they've got the football here in the first. If you look around, the whole world's coming together now. Turn on the light. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Is this the place we used to love? Is this the place that I've been dreaming of? And if you have a minute, why don't we go talk about it somewhere? What makes CarGurus the number one car shopping site? The thing I like most about CarGurus is looking at the great deals. <laughs> CarGurus gave me a lot of information that I wouldn't know how to find anywhere else. Everything I needed to find in a car was right there. I was able to understand whether I had a good deal or not before I walked into the dealership. It changed the whole buying experience for me. I found my car on CarGurus. Go to CarGurus today to find great deals from top rated dealers near you. Carl, I appreciate the invite here. As my broker, what am I paying you to manage my money? It's racquetball time. Oh. Carl, does your firm offer a satisfaction guarantee? Like Schwab does. Guarantee? Carl, can you remind me what you invested my money in? It's complicated. Are you asking enough questions about the way your wealth is being managed? If not, talk to Schwab, a modern approach to wealth management. How much time? Six minutes and we're a baked potato! Take a message back to your people. Welcome to the galaxy. Today's game is sponsored by Samsung. Give the gift of galaxy. So you wanted to make the team and they said go be a gunner. You said sure. Are you still sure? That's Antonio Hamilton from the Giants working against Joshua Bellamy and DeAndre Houston Carson. And look at that, trying to get downfield to cover the punt. Luigi. After a while, all you can do is What's laugh that? about it. That's not Luigi. easy. That? <laughs> Here's the Bears of their football down by seven, and here is Jordan Howard, some positive yardage. He's going to pick up four on first down. And Jordan Howard, you talked about it in the open as the Bears' first two play, the possessions have not been good. An emphasis to get him back, get him some life here. And they need to do that as they head towards the playoffs. And you head towards bad weather in Chicago. Next week, they're playing a night game on a Sunday night. Probably be less than 20 degrees there. The running game travels well in cold weather. They need to get Jordan Howard going. That's Tariq Cohen out there in motion, number 29. Mizell is in the backfield. He'll get the ball. And he surges forward out to the 39. It'll bring up a third down and two. Well, well, Howard, you know, it's not just Howard. It's the entire run game, but he is like their, you know, he's been their bell cow guy the last couple of years, and we know the offense is totally different this year. But even Matt Nagy said, no, overall, it has got to get better. Yeah, they've got to get their hammer going, and we saw this a couple of weeks ago with New, with New Orleans and Cincinnati where Mark Ingram hadn't touched it much in the pre previous few weeks. They got him going that day, and now he feels a full part of being in the offense again. Go! 
It'll be a third and two. Four man rush. Daniel fires incomplete. Another knockdown by Janoris Jenkins. That's his second pass knocked away today. Trying to get it to Allen Robinson, and once again, Chicago will punt. So this is a repeat of what we saw earlier, although in a little bit of a shorter route. Excellent job of Janoris Jenkins feeling the break by Robinson and getting his eyes to the football and playing through the receiver to knock the ball away. Back-to-back, -back, nice plays by Janoris Jenkins. So Jawil Davis, the rookie, is back to receive. Guy who had been returning punts, Quadri Henderson, was placed on IR. So that's why it's Davis. This time he calls the fair catch. See? Charles, the young rookie, lesson learned. And he caught it. That's the key. Don't give up the extra yardage. Okay. So he calls the fair catch, and he says, you know what? I'm going to let Saquon Barkley handle the ball when we get back from commercial. Giants with the early lead on the Bears. Pat Shermer, first-year head coach for the Giants on the left. It's Eli Manning making his 226th career regular season start. It's only four of the quarterbacks who have ever done that for one franchise. And here are the Giants, up seven thanks to a defensive score. Manning's got all day, going to let it fly, looking for Beckham, incomplete. And he really made a defensive play because Eddie Jackson, who does that quite regularly, four interceptions on the year, tried to grab that one. It yeah, and he was also number 37, Bryce Callahan. You'll see him come into the picture and run all the way across the field in a trail behind Odell Beckham Jr. Then Eddie Jackson, as you noted, Kevin, Felt the play, read it, and dropped back. And one more time, credit to you, Kevin. You're exactly right. Odell Beckham went from wide receiver to defensive back and knocked it away. I took your analyst vitamins before the, for the game, Charles. It seemed to be working so far. As the Giants will run the ball to Barkley. Short game and a third down is coming up. Eli Manning, best completion percentage he's ever had. This is... 69% on the year passer ratings the best as a matter of fact since the buy is passer rating is at 115 It seems like that buy Giants are two and one since certainly they felt they should have won last week But it seems like Pat Shermer and Eli got a chance to maybe iron out some things I think that and the offensive line got better. I think that's the big part getting Jermon Brown in from from the Los Angeles uh, Rams and have put him in a guard has helped out considerably Third down Four-man rush. It's blocked up. Manning throwing for Beckham again. Knocked away again. Kyle Fuller all over Odell Beckham Jr. And a three and out for the Giants. And we have our first game break of the day. Let's check in with Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. So Panthers, losers of three straight and falling behind early here. Jameis Winston finds Adam Humphreys. For this score, they would also add a field goal. Bucks up 10-0. Kevin Charles and Kevin. Carolina is really in some trouble all of a sudden. Looked like they were going to be a team that could challenge the Saints for the division. Dixon's punt. Not nearly as good as the first. It is short. Takes a giant bounce. So a good giant bounce. Look at this. All the way down to the 25-yard line. So Chase Daniel will try and get this off before I've got something for you. Oh, no, I don't. I'm out of bounds, which is illegal. And I can't be the first to touch the football downfield yet. I do. Coach, this, gun, this Gunner stuff, I got one being up there. Poor Antonio Hamilton working so hard. Because of that, it is a penalty, and it moves the Bears up a little bit. And so they begin this drive on their own 30, trying to get something going. Here is Daniel. Has some time. Throws, and that was almost intercepted. Landon Collins, and now a late penalty. Attended, intended one more time for Allen Robinson. And now let's see what the flag is. It's the third one that Daniels had knocked down today. Watch Collins 21. He makes a nice break on the ball, but I think he's there a little bit early. See him play Pass right through the body of Robinson. Defense, number 21. It's an excellent call. Spot foul. Automatic first down. And the back judge, Greg Wilson, made the call. And people are saying, well, that's a late flag. Well, he was 34-plus yards behind the play. Able to see it clearly, though. The flag came out. The, the right call made by the officials and so the game's first first down 13 yard penalty they go with Jordan Howard in the single back and they give it to Howard and he's got nowhere to go Ogletree was there first had himself a nice start so as far as Mitchell Trubisky goes the feeling Charles all week had been if this were a playoff game, he'd probably be playing. But the Bears have taken a very cautious approach earlier this year, 
Mack and Robinson were both hurt. They said, you know what, take an extra game and heal, and it worked. They're doing the same thing with their quarterback. Helps when you have a lot of confidence in the guy playing behind him, where you think that he can go out and execute your offense at a high level. Giants coming with a late blitz. Daniel hangs in, going deep. He's got a man, Gabriel, but it's, oh, it's dropped! That was a gimme interception to Curtis Riley, and he just dropped it. Meanwhile, Gabriel was open, but Daniel underthrew it. Underthrew it, and I think he threw it to the wrong spot because Gabriel was to the outside part of the field, and the ball ends up back more towards the middle. See that? Gabriel had beaten the corner to the outside, BW Webb number 23, and the ball's way back in the middle of the field. And Curtis White Riley, it doesn't get much easier than that, and he let that one get away. Daniel, pressure coming near side, gets it to Mizell, and he is going to be short of a first down by about a yard. You and I were down on the field in pregame, and there was a heavy mist coming down. And sometimes with these gloves, depending on how wet they get, they don't grip very well. And look at look at Mizell going for the first down, a little bit short of the marker. And the Bears are going to go. They are four of seven on fourth downs on the year. They come out with Cohen in the backfield. Fourth and one. Cohen's got it. Makes the cut first down and more. Tariq Cohen gets a block. And he's down to the 40. On fourth and one, an eight-yard run and a first down for Chicago. Not your normal short yardage run there, Kevin because all the blocking goes here, but watch the cutback. So everything goes to Tariq Cohen's right. He reads it, and then right there, he gets a nice seal block on the backside from Charles Leno, his left tackle. He ended up taking Olivier Vernon down inside. Cohen read it, made the move, and picked up the first down. Here's Howard, right up the middle. And Howard fights his way for about two and a half. Did you find it interesting on fourth and short that Tariq Cohen was your running back and not Jordan Howard? Normally you think on fourth and short like that, your big guy is going to be in there, your pounder, right? They went with the scat back. He made an excellent read and cut, but I was surprised that it wasn't Howard taking that play. Yeah, it's a little surprising, but I think for Matt Nagy, he just wants somebody to run the yes. ball. I don't think he can anyway. Howard. Not much. And a third down coming up. Let's go back to that fourth and one, Charles. And I don't think we're really looking at what Cohen did. Let's look in the sideline and see if he ends up taking out. Is this the head coach? Is that Pat Shermer? And he got a little friendly fire there from Janoris Jenkins rolling him out. Coach, you got to drop your hips, get your arms down, and fend off the block. Either that or you got some agility and hop over. Looks like Shermer's okay. Third down coming up. Here they're going to give it to Howard, and he's got a first down. Get that run game going on these Bears inside the 15. It was Cohen on fourth. It was Howard on third, and he picks up 21. How about Jordan Howard getting into up? Now watch him ride number 72, Charles Leno. See him stay with him. Now look at the left hand on him. Yeah, big boy, I trust you. I'll just follow you all the way upfield. Give me one more block, and he does on Curtis Riley, and then he finishes the run himself. Howard again, cuts left, has a seam. Jordan Howard down to the five. And he's going to be about a yard and a half shy of a first down before Riley tackled him, so Howard with some momentum. All right, so watch. Howard's coming here, and he's going to come back here, and watch how the blocking goes. And then coming back to this side, look at that block right there. Excellent job by number 80, Trey Burton, the tight end. He takes out Vernon. Good vision by Jordan Howard to cut it back. And a saving tackle there by Curtis Riley. Adam Shaheen checks in as a blocker. Tight end. They're going to run it to his side, Howard. 
bowling his way forward for a first down. And so it'll be a first and goal for the Bears. And you were calling for Howard. Maybe this is the game to get his momentum going. Well, he's got some going right about now. Yeah, it's not just talking about getting him going, but having a commitment to it. Look how fast they're going to go on offense now. The offensive line, I believe, has developed a rhythm now in the running game. Six consecutive runs. They'll throw it here. Going end zone. Touchdown. It is Shaheen. So Adam Shaheen with his first touchdown of the year has been out most of the year with a couple of different injuries had three touchdown catches last year. But that was set up by the run game. It was and then they came out fast with no huddle and got the, caught the Giants a little bit napping. Cody Parkey will attempt the extra point right down the middle. So it was a rough start for Chase Daniel on the Bears offense but they went to the run game six consecutive runs. And then they found the second year tight end Adam Shaheen for a touchdown to tie things up with 328 to go in this first quarter. We'll be right back after this message from Bose. Nagy saw his offense come to life with the run game. Jordan Howard, eight carries, 39 yards in the game. And that 10 play drive, that six consecutive runs, they culminated with the touchdown. But it's what you talked about, just getting back to establishing that. And we always talk about running backs getting a rhythm during a game. The offensive line has picked up a rhythm in the running game for Chicago, which has obviously aided Tariq Cohen and, of course, Jordan Howard. 45 of the 70 yards on that drive were from the run as Coleman on the return game break time let's check in with Carissa Thompson thanks Kevin so the Ravens succeed in the AFC trailing in Atlanta but Lamar Jackson first career road start doing it himself for that 13 yard score Ravens up 7-3 you think they recognize that in Atlanta Carissa <laughs> our colleague your colleague there Michael Vick did that often for those Falcons fans here's Lamar Jackson doing it for Baltimore so we saw the Bears get Howard going, see if the Giants could get Saquon Barkley going. Three carries, nine yards in the early going. Man, stands in, Beckham's got it first down across the middle. Trevathan tried to rip it away, but couldn't do it. And Odell Beckham Jr. out across the 40, and he picks up 20. Early in the game, they were having trouble getting the ball to Beckham. Look at him go inside in the zone coverage. And he ends up working inside of Bryce Callahan, who's playing zone number 37. And Roquan Smith, the rookie out of Georgia, number 58, late dropping into his zone. An open gap. Eli Manning puts it right on Odell Beckham. Express it. Giants go quick. Here's Barkley. And a good run across the 45, but we get a penalty on the play. Holding offense number 71 10 yard penalty from the spot of the flag replay the down that's on the rookie Will Hernandez started every game this year at left guard but we're not sure if that was actually on him might have been on the center Spencer Pulley both 70 number 71 77 Pulley out of Vanderbilt in any event the penalty was assessed Adding the throw. Pressure in his face throws behind Barkley. And it's incomplete as Trevathan was on coverage. 
Giants offensive line has been a problem for years to be quite honest. They tried to address it this year. They signed Nate Solder to a monster contract. They lost Jalapito the starting center early in the year. They switched it but Greco in there or Mame they gave him a big deal cut him wasn't working then they switch pieces they bring on Jermon Brown from the Rams. They're trying to figure it out. It has been as Pat Shermer told us beginning of the year we couldn't block anybody. Yeah and, and in order to run any type of offense obviously that's where things start. They feel like it's been better since this current combination is in there. Second down. And a lot of time. Hang it in. Now he's going to dump it off, and he's got a completion to Ellison, the tight end, who's out near the 44. With that type of time to throw the ball, you often get receivers that run free in the secondary because you lose sight of them in coverage. But that doesn't happen. The Bears take care of business downfield. Saquon Barkley, Aaron Lynch covering him out in the flat. Eli Manning scanning, turning, looking, looking. Ends up having to throw it short for a completion to Red Ellison. Haven't showed Khalil Mack. Haven't talked about him yet. He lines up on the left side of their defensive line right now. Getting chipped. Manning. And he's got a completion and a first down. Russell Shepard is going to haul it in. The former Tampa Bay Buck with the Panthers last year and for the Giants they move the chains. But you brought up the offensive line of the Giants in the last few plays. They have performed admirably giving Eli Manning plenty of time to find targets downfield and other than the throw behind Saquon Barkley he's been accurate. On the fake man and it's intercepted it is picked off by Fuller his team leading sixth interception of the year watch the coverage and look at the eyes of Kyle Fuller he sees it the whole way that's what we call the clue technique out on the corner. You know the receiver is, you feel him, but you're really looking into the quarterback, and as soon as he hits his drop point, you're breaking on the football because you anticipate that in-breaking route. And Kyle Fuller did that one absolutely to perfection. Kyle Fuller signed a big contract in the offseason. The Bears matched the Packers' $56 million offer, and Charles, with that, he's had by far his best NFL year. Kevin, he was gone as soon as Eli Manning's back foot hit the last move on his drop. He felt it and went. The Bears number one in the league in creating turnovers. That's their 30th of the year. Here is Tariq Cohen, who gets it to midfield. You know, you think about Fuller. I was asking Vic Fangio about what's been the difference, right? And he put up a lot of different things about him. Really, maybe this is the first year that he's had full confidence. He started as a pro and wasn't a starter. He also had a knee injury and had to work his way back. Then when he thought he was going to be a starter one year, he wasn't, had to work his way into the lineup. But as he noted, as Vic noted, we offered him a contract that matched what someone else in the league offered him when he could have been a free agent. That told him we believed in him, and that's helping his play as well. And he brought up a point that I forgot. He said, you know, he had that great start to his rookie year, but then he was benched. Yes. So all and of the battle these is way back. Bottom line is... He's having a great year now. Six interceptions on the year. But after one quarter from northern New Jersey, we are all tied at seven. McDaniel, and he ran it in for a touchdown. All that being said, we start the second quarter. We're tied at seven, along with Pam Oliver and Charles Davis. I'm Kevin Burkhart from the Meadowlands in northern New Jersey. Here's Daniel to throw. And looking for Robinson. Was he in? That's the question. They say yes. Allen Robinson, nice footwork and a first down. If he got both feet in, he did a fantastic job because I thought he had run out of space. And look at him catch the ball and drag mm. with one foot down. There's the catch, foot down. There, watch coming. There's the drag. You see all the turf come up. Excellent job by Allen Robinson, all that practice you put in. And they brought him in as a free agent to make catches just like that and more. They did three year forty two million dollar deal from the Jags. He tore his ACL last year missed the entire year. He hurt got hurt in week one three running backs on the field for Chicago. They give it to one of them. It's Cohen not much there. 
That was well played by Olivier Vernon. Well, we talked about Fuller getting the deal. We talked about Robinson getting the deal. The Bears spent a ton of money this offseason. So these are the cumulative contracts for the life of the contract. But look at what they did. They traded for Mac, then they signed him. Fuller, they matched the Packers offer. Goldman, their nose tackle. Robinson, the wide out. Burton, the tight end from Philly. Amuka Mera, who was here on a one year deal, they brought him back. Gabriel comes in from Atlanta. And then Daniel, oh, by the way, the backup quarterback. That is a lot of money spent, and all of it looks great right now. Here's Mizell, and no gain, maybe a yard on second down, and, and what, penalties. And what a bad play at the end. This play's almost over, and number 99, Mario Edwards Jr., dives into the pile at the end, and that's what's going to draw the flag. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 99. See him leading with his head? The end of the play. First down. He was trying to twist to the shoulder, but the head led first into the pile, and it was a play that was absolutely unnecessary. The ball carrier was going down. He was taken care of. That's just piling on like you do in the backyard when you're playing with your buddies. Bad play, and these are the types of plays that lead a team to only have three wins at this stage of the year. Tariq Cohen was running free. So watch Ogletree right there. He just moves, sees the pattern, and also just sees the football. He was what they call pattern reading, saw where the guys were breaking, and due to his film study, able to anticipate the route in the ball direction and gets his second interception of the game. Before I had the shooting, burning, well, the Rams traded Alec Ogletree to the Giants after they signed him to a big deal, and he's never had two interceptions in a game until today. He also has an interception return for a touchdown today. That's what gives the Giants the ball. Here's Eli Manning to throw it, and it's tipped away. There is Khalil Mack. First time we've called his name today for this electric Bears defense who comes into the game second in the league in scoring. And for much of his career, he's played on the left side of his defense. But with the Bears, he's alternating going left side, right side. On this play, he comes from his familiar left side spot, knows he can't get to the quarterback, but gets a big arm up in the air and tips the ball away. Here's Barkley looking to get him going. And he works out to the 40. He's going to pick up six. Well, Khalil Mack, when you get a, an all-world type player, his production's been great. And remember, he missed two games, too. That's that's in two less games, so you're talking about impressive. And then the effect on the overall defense. Is it all because of him? No. But clearly, look at all these numbers. The opponent passer rating. The Bears are the best in the NFL in all of these categories. They got the 30th takeaway today. And then the turnover differential. Well, they've given a couple back today with Daniel, too. But that's what happens when you add Mack. An elite pass rusher. As on third down, it's Manning, and Beckham is well covered again. And he fell down to Prince Amukamara, homecoming for him, the former giant. Beckham hasn't been open too often in the early going. He has not, and Amukamara just gets better and better every week. He's another guy that defense coordinator Vic Fangio has said has grown with familiarity with the system and also the understanding that a team believes in him. As you pointed out earlier, Kevin, he was on a one-year deal last year, got brought back and signed to an extended-year contract. That told him that Chicago believes in his talent. He's playing very well this year. Well, six targets to Beckham, and they've only hooked up one time. And here is the punt. Short. Cohen will let it bounce, and it goes out of bounds around the 20. Well, Khalil back. you got to block him for an entire game. Good luck, 7-7. Seven, seven. The City Hoops Classic, Saturday on Fox. Hasn't exactly been a clinic for the quarterbacks here today. Charles, you know, it kind of matches the day. It's December, it's kind of wet and rainy and misty, and 
kind of felt like it was going to be that type of game today. But the opportunities are there. I still expect Chase Daniel to be aggressive pushing the ball downfield. Bears have had people open. Daniel's missed a couple. There's no question. He's going to throw it here looking for Cohen. That's an easy one. And Tariq Cohen out across the 25. So why, Charles, is Khalil Mack so darn good? Show us. Because of his power and his leverage. Watch what he does here and watch the inside arm, his left arm. is what they call the long pole. And see him get it underneath right there on Nate Solder. Now watch as he dips and bends with that leverage and power. He just takes Solder and walks him all the way back into Eli Manning. I mean, you take a look at that and you're thinking to yourself, who just did that? to a 300-pound offensive lineman. That's Khalil Mack getting that done. Nate Solder is 6'8". Here's Mizell on the carry, and it's going to bring up a third down and short. I mean, Nate Solder is 6'8". Look, Khalil <laughs> Mack just combined being a world-class weightlifter and obviously football player with being a slalom skier. You're watching when they go down through the through the through the, uh, the the poles, not the poles, but whatever they call the gates. Yeah. And they're getting back and forth, and they're down, and they're low. And they have that leverage and power. And you just saw it there from Khalil Mack. Bears gave up two first round picks to the Raiders, and they gave him $141 million, and it's worth it. <laughs> As Akeem Hicks it's said, it's it's he makes everyone's it's day it's on defense a lot easier. Oh, a fumble. Daniel tried to hand it off. Now he picks it up and just slides down. Well, that was going to Jordan Howard, but he just dropped it. And he falls on it in a loss, and now a Chicago punt. And at the end of the play, if he'd just thrown it over the sideline, would have saved the yardage of the loss. But I think he just wanted to make sure he secured the football. The ball just literally slid out of his hands. It wasn't an exchange problem. We talked earlier about there being a mist here during the during pregame warm-ups. It's still a damp day. Ball must have been a little slick, and it slid right out of the hands of Chase Daniel. Pat O'Donnell to do the punting. Davis, no fair catch this time, makes a move. Davis twirling his way out to the 39, and the Giants will have pretty decent field position. Well, thanks to Mr. Ogletree, the Giants are in this game tied at seven, but now can their offense get something going? We'll see, seven all in the second. Well, the Bears have been committed to the run today. Matt Nagy really wanted to get it going. The Giants, well, they're trying to get Saquon Barkley going. They have to be able to run the ball if they have a chance to win. And they'll throw it here. Manning, again, has time over the middle. And it's in and out of the hands of Beckham. That was almost intercepted by Fuller again. Sometimes when plays take a while to develop, it's not always good for the offense. Sometimes that allows the defense to recover. Because in this, Kyle Fuller sees the play ahead of him coming from zone coverage on the outside and makes a break on the ball. Very nearly comes up with his second interception because he saw the play develop in front of him. Now they'll run it. Barkley out to the 41, so another third down and long. We've got a game break. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee. All right, earlier this week, the Packers' Devontae Adams says he thinks he's the best receiver in football. He's already over 1,000 yards on the season, and that is his 11th touchdown. Ties him for most in the league. Make a pretty good argument. Green Bay up 7-0 right now. A little Lambo leap for you against the Arizona Cardinals. Kevin and Charles? He's up there, Kurt. I'll tell you one thing. How about Aaron Rodgers at Lambeau in December? He's 16-1. and 16-1. and one. Not bad for a California kid adapting to Wisconsin. Third and seven. Four-man rush. Pressure anyway. Manning gets rid of it. It is Shepard incomplete. And the Giants offense is stuck in neutral. And even if he catches it, he's short of the first down sticks. And Sterling Shepard grabbing his side. Wonder in the, in the tackle if he came down on the football and then the defender came down on top of him. Hope he's going to be okay. Eli Manning is 3 of 12 for 39 yards. Fourth down, they'll punt it again. Oh, that got some pressure. But still, Riley Dixon got it away and a fair catch by Tariq Cohen at the 25. Daniel Brown, the tight end, got in there and almost got a piece. And now Shepard obviously concerned. Well, Charles, in just six days, the MLS Cup will be lifted in front of the most 
or one of the most electric crowds in all of sports. Atlanta United taking on the Portland Timbers. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on Fox, or watch anywhere on the Fox Sports app. Mr. Arthur Blank busting his buttons with pride with that team. That's his team as well. Look at Shepard working inside with Roquan Smith, the rookie. And as is, Shepard misses the pass and comes down, Roquan Smith comes down on top of him. I wonder if that's where the injury occurred. Team immediately coming up, wincing in pain. So now it's the Bears. High snap to get it to Howard. Patient run, big hole. Jordan Howard across the 45, all the way out to midfield. Again, we're getting good vision by these running backs because everything's going here. And watch how Jordan Howard reads it. You see, it's all right there. So everything's matched up there. And watch his vision to the backside when he realizes that things have been walled off by his offensive line and tight end Trey Burton. That's where the open space is. His eyes let his feet get to that spot. You were calling for Jordan Howard at the beginning of the game. He's got 65 yards, Charles, as Cohen gets a carry here, and he has no chance. Giants played it well. But consider this. High game for Jordan Howard this year was 82 yards. That was the opener in the loss to Green Bay. Here he is, 9 for 65, and an average of 7.2. Part of it is the commitment that they came out today and decided we are going to run the football. We're going to stay with it even if we have a couple negative runs early, which they did. And the offensive line has gotten in sync and started to control the line of scrimmage a little bit better. Second down, they'll run it to Cohen. Looking for a hole, he's gonna bounce it back near side. Cohen up the middle to the left. Changing direction rapidly and somehow turning that into a four-yard game before Michael Thomas came up to make the hit. Let's see if Tariq Cohen bounced this one when he probably should have taken it up in the gap. Right here. See, and now when he bounces it, but if he just takes it and cuts upfield in here and gets something out of it, but he decides to stay with it because, what did you call him earlier, Kevin? The human joystick? That's what you do. You keep bouncing around hoping to find open space. And he made a lot happen on that play for minimal gain. Charles, that was a 54-yard run for four yards. <laughs> and a timeout by the Bears. So they will talk this over with 7.05 to go in this first half. As Trubisky. Helping out as an assistant coach today. Well, this weekend is part of My Cause, My Cleats. NFL players supporting charitable causes throughout custom design cleats. Discover how players are making a difference in their communities. And bid on their special edition cleats at NFL.com slash My Cause, My Cleats. A very cool initiative. Players getting a chance to express themselves. Alec Ogletree having himself a day-to-day -day, two interceptions and... Ogletree today wearing his cleats for autism awareness. Great stuff from Ogletree. All the guys have their different causes that they're supporting, able to express them during this time frame is really cool. Bears one of five on third down. Daniel, penalty flag. Burton with a nice catch, but he's got nowhere to go. Giants played it well. It was Landon Collins, but now let's see what the penalty was. And Daniel says it's on the Giants. But Prior to the pass, illegal use of the hands, hands to the face. Defense, number 99. Five yard penalty at the previous spot. Automatic first down. Second big penalty against Mario Edwards, number 99. Here he is right in front of you with the center, Cody Whitehair, and watch his hands. See the left hand getting right up into the face and the jaw area of Cody Whitehair, and that's where the that's, that's what drew the flag. Edwards comes out yellow, now. Yellow, yellow. Josh Morrow in for it. Bellamy in motion. And they will just run it to Howard right up the gut. And Howard is upended with a little somersault action down to the 38 by Grant Haley. 
You know it's interesting we're talking about this Bears run game as you look at the replay and Charles the thing is you, you, you look at Matt Nagy's offense and clearly they do a lot of unique stuff I mean different than any Bears offense probably in history and you think well they they, they pass the ball they run it the seventh most in the NFL and that's why he thought and he told us we've got to do better they certainly do because they have the offensive line that's built to run the football as well they need to utilize those guys strengths Daniel pressure hit as he throws going far side of the field and Robinson caught it are you kidding me how on earth did Allen Robinson make that catch 30 yards not only that how was there no flag downfield because I thought B.W. Webb was into him well past the five yard zone and he was and no flag and they let them work it out themselves and Allen Robinson worked it out to the bear satisfaction right over the top of B.W. Webb who's having his best season as a pro but that was not one of his better plays that ball's there he sees it coming and he can't make a play on the football Allen Robinson does here is Cohen looking for a seam breaks the tackle down to the five that was sensational by <laughs> Allen Robinson there's a lot going on in that play because B.W. Webb was interfering it with him and Robinson stayed with it and the officials decided to let them play it through and Robinson takes it right off the top. Wasn't that a David Tyree type catch there? I know Giants fans don't like hearing that because it went the other way. But right off the top of the helmet, <laughs> and he takes it from him. Second and goal. Here's Jordan Howard. And powering his way forward, still going down to the one. And a third and goal from the one coming up. And guys, and, and, and let's see if they stay in gun here, Kevin, because in this ball game, Cody Whitehair, number 65, has had a few high snaps in the game so far. Can't afford one here in a scoring opportunity. They go Wildcat. It's Howard as the quarterback. He's going to get it. He's going to run it. And he's not going to get in. So a little trickery, but the Wildcat does not work. Dalvin Tomlinson and Tate Davis help. And here come a bunch of defensive guys on the field for the Bears now. Akeem Hicks and Roy Robertson. And look at this. He fakes it. He goes inside, but a nice play. Looked like Kareem Martin, 96 initially, and Dalvin Tomlinson, 94 after that. Well, Akeem Hicks, I asked him if he's going to get the ball. He said, I can assure you I'm a lead blocker if I'm in. We'll see. Fourth and goal. Oh, they give it to Hicks. the fridge part two he lied to us Charles with a straight face <laughs> and look at the celebration from his teammates I don't know if it was you or was it Pam that asked him point blank in our meeting last night about who's going to carry the football first and he looked us all in the eye and said well it won't be me I'm just a blocker and he did it with a straight face <laughs> so when we see Mr. Hicks again next time we'll question his word and congratulate him on his touchdown I had a feeling didn't he just have a feeling the way the way that all went and even <laughs> oh gosh even Matt Nagy said well we may have a wrinkle or two for the defensive guys but truthfully you would have thought it would have been an Eddie Jackson or a Bryce Callahan one of the little guys touching the ball Instead, as you said, Fridge Part 2. Hello, Chicago, 2018. On fourth and goal, nonetheless. And now we get a flag. False start. Offense, number 72. Five-yard penalty. <laughs> he can't stop laughing. And remember, he didn't practice much this week because of a sore Achilles. And I wondered if that would limit him during the game. But amazingly enough, when they decide to hand you the football, the Achilles feels pretty good. Achilles is all better. <laughs> Feel great, coach. Now, Parkey's had some issues. 
But here he is perfect and he gives the Bears a seven point lead. Well Charles we've been harping it all game the Bears getting back to the run game and of course they hand off to their nose tackle. Yeah and look at Akeem Hicks they're wiping the front of his shirt that's telling the officials that he's checking in as an eligible receiver. He's not wiping it off just because he's drying his hands and now look at him take the hand off and power his way through breaking the plane. Al Gogletree tried to hold him out but that's a lot of force coming at you in Akeem Hicks. You see Ogletree, you see Riley. And as you noted, shades of William Perry, Akeem Hicks gets the touchdown and gets a great celebration. What a reception he got from his teammates. And there's the head coach, just like I drew it up, big guy. And you know something, Kevin, it's, it's, it's not just a touchdown for Akeem Hicks. That's Matt Nagy telling a respected veteran who's been here through the rough times. Here's a chance to enjoy some of the good times as well. Here is the kickoff. Well, that was something. Coleman back up back to six. Corey Coleman across the 20 taken down there. Let's get a game break from Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. Low scoring affair here in Detroit. Tied at three, but then Jared Goff finds Robert Woods for the eight yard score. Rams wins the NFC West with the win. They're up right now on the road, 10-3. Kevin Charles and Payne. Carissa, thanks. Rams coming off the bye. Feeling pretty good. And by the way, with the Saints loss, the Rams now control their own destiny for that home field advantage. So now the Giants with 334 to go in this first half looking to get something going on offense just 60 total yards they've had four three and outs and now Hicks is playing some D Charles here's Manning pressure coming he's going to get it over the middle to Simonson the tight end and he should have a Giants first down well running the football Bears are doing it today well and they're also committed to it look we didn't know necessarily that they'd start running to their nose tackle but <laughs> look at this Charles I mean there you see it right 24 rushes to only 11 passes and remember this is only a 14 to 7 game so if you're the Giants and you're looking at that disparity it doesn't have to stay that way you can still utilize Saquon Barkley in the running game you're only down seven here in the first half here's Manning Blitz coming on the corner. Manning just throws it into the ground. What was that? And a flag on the play. I mean, Barkley was right next to him. Trying to set up a screen and nothing was there, so he made sure he threw it in the ground so it wouldn't pop up and become an interception. Holding. Offense, number 82. Ten-yard penalty. First down. See, this play just gets blown up by the defensive front. Watch the guys in white. They just take care of it. See how they're pushing the pile back? And then they read it, and they move with Eli Manning. And there's Simon to number 82. But a full grasp of the on-rushing Chicago Bear right there was Leonard Floyd, number 94. Excuse me, Simon's son. Get it to Barkley. Hot pursuit on Saquon Barkley. Doesn't have much room. Just a couple yards on that play. As Tolliver, the cornerback, was there. And when you talk about Saquon Barkley, we talked earlier in the game about what Vic Fangio, the defense coordinator of the Bears, thought about it. Remember what Akeem Hicks, their defensive tackle, said? He called him a meta, a meta human. <laughs> and he said he can do everything. So you know the eyes are there. Can other guys make plays as well and take some of the pressure off of it? There's Vic Fangio, the longtime defensive coordinator here in the NFL. Now with the Bears, of course. Manning to throw. Has time. Far side there is Beckham. Makes a catch and a stiff arm pushing forward to the 39. So now you've got a makeable third down coming up. As that should run us down to the two minute warning. 14 yard pickup to Beckham. Well, it's the Bears with two minutes left in the first half that have the lead. Listen. Takes a lot of energy to punch it in on a two yard, one yard touchdown. Bill, no one out pieces the hut. So, with two minutes to go in the first half, we've had three touchdowns today, Charles. One has been by a linebacker on an interception return, one has been by a nose tackle on a run. <laughs> it's been that kind of game. 14 7 Bears, third and five for the Giants. 
They're showing blitz. They back off. Manning stands in, throws incomplete. Trying to get it to Benny Fowler. And the Giants will punt again. I think Khalil Mack walked Nate Solder right back into the path of Eli Manning, tried to make the pass. That was my first blush. Let's take a look here. Watch the pass rush coming. Actually, it's Roy Robertson Harris, 95, who walks him back in there. And there's Mack working back inside, trying to affect the play. Dixon. Had an erratic day. This is a good punt and a fair catch by Cohen at the 21. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee. Kurt. On the forecast for the Visa halftime, Baltimore tries to bring a downpour into Atlanta. The sun is shining down there in Houston where they'll take on the Cleveland Browns over here. And the Broncos get a chilly reception in Cincinnati. Turn up the heat wherever you are. The Visa halftime is next. So let's see, Kurt, Kurt is doing stand-up, he's doing weather. What else has he got in the bag? We grew up in this area. Do you remember a meteorologist, Dr. Frank Field? Of course. You remember him? Yeah. Kurt doing his Dr. Frank Field. Of course. Oh. Kurt's got it all. He's also going to do play-by-play -play in a couple weeks, by the way, so looking forward to that. Here's Jordan Howard, who has no room to run. Kareem Martin was on the tackle. So the Bears football up by seven. They got two timeouts left as the Giants... Looks like the Giants call their first yeah. time out right here. Yeah, you would think the Bears would be content to go in the locker room up 14-7. Mm -hmm. And the Giants, with this field position, trying to make something happen in a year you've only won three games. I like Pat Shermer taking these timeouts, trying to get one more chance on offense. There are the leading rushers for the Bears. And Chase Daniel has had a tough day, 6 of 11. Does have a touchdown pass, two interceptions, one of them returned for a touchdown. But I think the story has been the commitment to the run game. And Jordan Howard, who's got 68 yards on only 13 carries. In the, in the short term, it's the right play for the Bears, but it's also a great long view for them getting into December. Cold weather games, but running the football might be at a premium. Daniel pressured in trouble, running away. I think this play was made by Landon Collins, number 21, the safety. Sure, you get the, but watch what he does here, reading screen. All right, so he reads it, and watch him come right now and go to Tariq Cohen. And when he sees that, Chase Daniel understands he can't go there with the football. So now he has to hold it an extra count. And that allows B.J. Hill, the rookie out of North Carolina State, to end up with a sack. Well, the that Giants, was well played. the Charles Giants sacks have not been their forte. They're 31st in the league in that area. As a matter of fact, that's Hill's third. That leaves the team. But makes it a third and 22. The Giants call another timeout, and they will run to Cohen. And Tariq Cohen makes a couple of moves and works his way out to the 20. But well shy of a first down, so the Bears will punt. And Landon Collins is down. Star safety for the Giants. And he's up on his own, slow to get up. We'll be right back after this message from State Farm. Uh, sorry, Aaron, I know this thing's, but defense wins championships. And we're defending your truck now, so State Farm, you can uh, pack those khakis and go. Right, who's protecting my house? Should I unpack my khakis? No, you keep those khakis packed. My name is Amy Belafonte. I didn't used to believe in monsters, but I do now. You could help us save millions. You might be the most important little girl in the world. The Passage, January on Fox. Well, of course, that's going to be a good show, Charles. That'll be fun to watch. Chase Daniel a little upset, not the way they expected that series to go. The big sack and... So they're set up the punt. The Giants called their final timeout. So they've got a minute 26 to go, and they should get decent field position here. Oftentimes in this situation, you pop Odell Beckham Jr. back there, hoping for a big play, but they stick with Jawel Davis. See if the rookie could give him something here. Makes the catch. 
On the near side of the field. Good return. And a big hit as well by DeAndre Houston Carson. So the Giants have plenty of time. At least get in a field goal range here, but first they got to move the ball. They haven't done that at all. Look at their possessions here today. I mean, they're three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out. And they didn't take these timeouts to try and get this field position to be conservative here, which means you've got to think you're thinking about pushing the ball downfield. If you're Vic Fangio, the D coordinator for the Chicago Bears, let's see if he wants to bring a little pressure here. Try and heat up Eli May and get the ball out of his hands a lot faster. Khalil Mack is going to be on the right side of the Bears defensive line on first down. Here comes pressure. Manning is decked by Leonard Floyd. The attention went to Mack, but Floyd came flying in for his second sack of the year. And they ran a little game there with him, all right, with, with Leonard Floyd as they're going to line up quickly to go. And you watch Floyd, watch him loop back to the inside to get him. No timeouts, Manning. Down he goes again. It was Akeem Hicks. And at this point, one of the Giants will just take a knee. They're not going with any type of urgency here, Kevin. I think your thought process is probably spot on. But he felt Akeem Hicks and just went down to avoid the hit while taking the sack. Bears can use a timeout if they choose. The way the first half has gone throwing the football for Chase Daniel, I think, I think Matt Nagy just wants to get into the locker room and regroup a little bit. He has the lead, doesn't feel the need to take anything else or add to it at this point. You know what's interesting? It's a seven-point game, 14-7, to seven, and right now likely the half ends that way. It feels like it's a 40-point game, doesn't it? It certainly does because of the Giants' inability to move the football. But how about Akeem Hicks splitting there? And this is the first one. That's Leonard Floyd. Hicks came up field, and Chad Wheeler, 63, and Jamon Brown, 78, both went with Hicks. That allowed Floyd to come inside and get the first sack. And on the second one, Hicks just decimated the offensive line in front of him. And Eli Manning felt it and went to the ground. So after the Bears called the timeout, the Giants say, you know what, might as well run a play, and they'll do it with third and 23. And they'll just hand off. It's Barkley. Saquon Barkley making people miss. <laughs> Look at this effort by Barkley, who's still going out the midfield. He is something else. 230-pound back, and he runs like he's 150. They have been all over him in recent weeks about taking what they call the tough runs, the dirty runs inside. Sometimes there's just three or four yards that's available. Well, he took that run there and just decided there's more available if I continue to work, and that's exactly what he did. Made people miss and got the ball out over midfield. There's six seconds left, and I got to tell you, we were watching pregame warm-ups, and Aldrich Rosas hit a 61-yarder that would have been good from 70. They have to be a quick throw to the sideline in order to set that up. And it's fourth down. They convert. Ellison will get out of bounds. They'll have a shot. Here it is. Fascinating, right? So the Bears yes. call a timeout. Giants just hand off, almost willing to concede. Barkley's magic will give him a field goal try. If this goes through the posts, Saquon Barkley ought to be embraced by every New York Giant because that effort to set this up was sensational. So this would be a 57-yard attempt, attempt for Aldrich Rosas. His career long is 53, but again, he was good from 61-plus in pregame. This could make the Bears' timeout taken that by him. This has the distance. It is... You believe that? What a wild ending to the half, and that Bears timeout came back to bite them. When they were going the entire time, it looked like they were just ready to go to the locker room. They take the timeout there, and they give the Giants a great opportunity, and they cash it in. Rosas, who's had an unbelievable year from 57 his career long, and with despite how this game is felt, it's a four-point Bears lead as we go to the break at MetLife Stadium. What a kick as the play of the first half is presented by DirecTV. More for your thing. That's it. Today's 
Game Flow brought to you by Progressive. It's a four-point Bears lead as we go to the third quarter, and it's been a, a non-conventional game. An interception return by that man. We had Akeem Hicks, a nose tackle, running in a touchdown as, as a running back. And it's a four-point game. It was interesting. End of the half, the Bears kind of waited with the Giants at the ball. They took a timeout with 17 seconds. And the Giants kind of got lucky because Barkley bailed them out, and they hit a long field goal. Yeah, the Bears gave every indication. They just wanted to get to the locker room up 14-7. to They could have called the timeout earlier if they really wanted to press the situation. But calling it that late, giving Barkley a chance to make the run, then a short pass and set up the field goal by Rosas, that didn't make sense. Now the Giants will get the ball to start the third quarter. And for more from the halftime report, let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Kevin, after that field goal, Pat Shermer and the rest of the Giants were mighty excited. They were all smiles. I asked Shermer, is this Eli Manning's game to finish, barring injury? He said, yes, of course it is. We want to win. Now for an injury, wide receiver Sterling Shepard, he is questionable with a rib injury for the Bears. Matt Nagy telling us that we have got to get some positive yards on offense. We're just not good enough on that side right now. Back to you. Damn, thanks. Here is Barkley. And maybe that run at the end of the half gets Barkley and the Giants' run game a little momentum because he picks up 14 and a first down. Well, I think you're seeing the effects of the coaching of recent weeks where they've been emphasizing get through that pile, take the, take the hard runs. If it's only three or four yards, get to three or four. Don't dance and try and get out of it all the time. Don't bounce back. Don't bounce outside and maybe lose some yardage. But he not only took the hard run there, he turned it into something more with his power. Short left, short left, short left. So now Barkley short carries left. 57 yards just like that. And he looks Barkley's way, get him the ball against two defenders and just barrels his way forward. Picks up about three yards. You know, you heard Pam mention about, you know, Giants want to win this game. Eli Manning, look, there's always talk in this town about when is the next quarterback, the young guy, going to play. Well, it was news today because Kyle Oletta, their rookie from Richmond, well, he was active for the first time, and he took a lot of warm-ups in the pregame, but I think Pam kind of summed it up. It, now's not the time, right? No, it's not the time. The only time we'll see a lot is if this actually became a big blowout or, of course, if there were an injury. But as, he, as, Pam, told, as Pam reported, this is Eli Manning's game all the way through. Here's Barkley. Gets a good block, and Barkley's got a first down. So I think the decision is let's give it to Barkley every play, and it's working to start this third quarter. Really nice blocking to, to the point. Watch the block here against Khalil Mack. They're all pro outside linebacker defensive end. A really nice block coming inside by Scott Simons in number 82. And look at Barkley. Puts his foot in the ground and cuts back inside with some nice power. Good vision by Barkley. Able to see where the hole was and almost got through it. Wayne Gallman Jr. in for the first time today. They're going to let Odell Beckham Jr. look to throw it. He's done it once. He's got a man wide open. It's caught for the touchdown. The second touchdown pass of the year from Beckham. He hits Russell Shepard, and the Giants have the lead. And the game today is quarterback mobility, right? The ability to buy extra time and extend the play. Odell Beckham does exactly that. Keeps the play alive and then patiently waits for his receiver to come wide open on a coverage bust. And Russell Shepard puts it in the end zone. How about that? Beckham hit Saquon Barkley earlier in the year against Carolina. A 49-yard touchdown pass to Russell Shepard. And then this absolutely wild game. Somehow the Giants are in front. It is tricky. Right now for the Bears, who find themselves behind. Second touchdown pass of the year. It hasn't happened. A receiver hasn't had two in a year since Antoine Randall did it. Remember, he was a quarterback. Yeah, at the University of Indiana at IU. And how about Russell Shepard on the receiving end? Do you know a couple years ago? Now watch where this starts, okay? Here's Russell Shepard right here, and watch him just wander through the secondary that takes the bite right here. Okay, you see right there? He came upfield, and now Shepard by himself down here. Beckham finds the time and then throws the pass downfield. Right now, somewhere, Russell Shepard's wife is so happy 
because you know what she did? She bought him a jugs machine a couple years ago to work on him catching the football. That just paid off handsomely. So all of a sudden, the Giants have the lead again, and Howard is absolutely stuffed. Dalvin Tomlinson broke through the line and made a nice play. And that's why they moved him inside. Remember, they traded Damon Snacks Harrison a few weeks ago to the Detroit Lions, and people are wondering, what's going to happen to the middle of our run defense? Well, this is what Dalvin Tomlinson was drafted to do, to play inside. The trap block was trying to move to the right. Dalvin Tomlinson followed it as a defensive tackle and followed it right to the football. Loss of three. Daniel Blitz coming. Daniel in trouble, throws on the run, incomplete. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver. Grant Haley was all over him. Eligway came through with pressure there. As James Betcher, first year defensive coordinator, was in Arizona the last few years. Look at that. Eligway, 45 from a deep position at the linebacker spot. Came through and timed it perfectly as the traffic cleared in the offensive line, and he puts the hit on Daniel. Bears are only one of seven on third down today, and this is a third and 13. Four man rush. Daniel pressured again by a win tries to get it Howard low throw is to go down and get it Howard good effort But he's nowhere near a first down and the Bears will have to punt it away That was going to be difficult to pick up to begin with but with the throw from Daniel that put Howard on the ground no chance And this Giants team does this remind you of the beginning of the game a little bit when the Giants made some big plays early gained some momentum mm -hmm. and started to feed off of each other can their offense get another big play for them because this is a great chance for them to take a little bit of control in this game. O'Donnell the punt here is Davis. Oh, Davis is taken down. Kwiatkowski was right there with the tackle. So Odell Beckham Jr. How about this? A little celebration with Eli. It was the wide receiver throwing it to another wide receiver. Shepard, the touchdown. We were told it was an offside, so they're re-kicking, and well, Davis will get another chance. A little bit better return for Davis and the Giants that time. And here comes another flat. And another flat. But he got about 15 yards in the return to add to the yardage that they picked up from where Kwiatkowski had put him down on the spot on the previous punt. Well, that'll pinned on this particular flag. There's no foul for a block in the back. First down. All right. So after all that, it's the Giants football. It was that BW Webb number 23. I believe it was extending his arms, but the officials just told us it did not happen. Giants football. Odell Beckham. Those are uh, approaching Muhammad Sanu passing numbers. Been fortunate enough to see both of them. That one against Carolina was a throwback to Saquon Barkley for a big play. This one to Russell Shepard. Here is Saquon Barkley working up the middle. And by the way, speaking of Shepard, we heard Pam's report at the half about Serling Shepard. He came back in. First time he's been back in since he got hurt, number 87. So Giants getting healthier. There is Shepard. Good to see him back. It is good to see him back. They really need to utilize him more as a slot receiver, a guy who can make big catches, work inside, and make those catches that take some of the pressure off of the rest of the offense. But the way this game's going now, as we said before, great opportunity for the Giants. But if you're the Bears and the number one defense in the league, you've got to reassert yourselves now to help out your own struggling offense. Hey, go 50, 58, 58, you're going out up there. Go 58, 118, 110. Barkley gets a block to the outside. Saquon Barkley, uh, first down for the Giants. This, this Bears team, look, they've been excellent all year. Their defense has, has led them, and their offense has made splash plays. But here is what they haven't done. They haven't trailed. You know, coming into today, look at this. Only the Chiefs trailed less in total minutes of the game. Now, look, they trailed two plays in. Ogletree had the interception return for a touchdown, and they overcame that. Bottom line is, Charles, it's just unfamiliar for them. So how do they react? And we'll find out. You said it's got to be on their D. 
And right now, the Giants' ability to run the football is coming to the front. Number 26, Barkley, taking tough runs inside and gaining nice yardage. Manning to pass. Looking at Beckham. No, he's going to go underneath to Rhett Ellison, who makes the catch. Ellison, who's had a good couple of weeks because Evan Ingram has been out. He injured his hamstring in warm-ups last week. Well, Ellison coming off a career-high week and making a nice play there. They don't get the field goal before the half without his catch. Well, he's another guy that the head coach trusts greatly. Talk about Red Ellison. He had him in Minnesota. Used him as a tight end, as a fullback, as an H-back. You can move him all over the place. In fact, he's the Giants nominee for the Art Rooney Sportsmanship Award this year in the NFL, which is a high honor. Second and one. Barkley's got it. Barkley taken down. That is a heck of a play. Bilal Nichols, the rookie out of Delaware, fifth round pick. Okay, I'm just worried. I mean, I'm not quite sure what Nate Solder was doing there because firing out, was he just looking in a zone area to block someone? Nichols just wandered right past him and into the ball carrier. So it'll be a third and four. Giants are one and seven on third downs. Four man rush. Manning gets rid of it and it is caught for a first down. There's Shepard and he grabs his side again. That's what he went out for and he might be going out again for it. But he made the catch, didn't he? Watch Shepard, 87 in blue, working inside on 58. Gives him a nice little head fake and a jab and froze Roquan Smith just enough to gain the yard, the, the separation he needed to be available to catch the football, and it was delivered well by Eli Manning. I know he's been hurt today, Charles, but he's been kind of a forgotten man. It's only his ninth catch the last four games, including today, and he's a good receiver. Picks up the first, and they'll throw it again. And time all day, knocked down the line. He had Ellison wide open, too, but it was batted down by Akeem Hicks. He's had quite an eventful day. Thought they had Shepard down in the middle of the field as well earlier in the route. Probably was looking elsewhere, and then when he checks it down and tries to go to his tight end, there's Akeem Hicks elevating and knocking the ball away. But watch here. Watch Shepard right there. If that ball is able to be thrown earlier, he's got a chance. But Eli Manning was going in a different direction. Barkley. Patient running for Barkley who meanders his way down to the 30. So the Giants in field goal range and now a makeable third down will be a third and five. As Barkley picks up five. You mentioned in the first half the Giants offensive line and the makeshift group that they've been finally solidifying and look at what Saquon Barkley's doing here in the second half. Getting more t more touches balls in his chest a lot more and he is just going. I feel like he trusts this offensive line a little bit more to get some push and create enough space for him to go ahead and use his power at the line of scrimmage. And now he's split all the way out down the bottom of our screen is Barkley. Four man rush. Manning still gets pressure. Now there's Barkley again. A first down leaping over people. Saquon Barkley. First down for the Giants. He jumped over Adrian Amos, the safety, and he picked up 17. Now watch him. He's just going to be here. He's going to wander here into the middle of the field. He's got a linebacker on him, and they use a natural pick on, on the outside backer. And how about Eli Manning keeping that play alive and finds Barkley coming underneath in his line of sight with a big leap over Amos. Wayne Gallman in the game gets his first touch of the game. I think it's only his second snap he's played all day. But well, you got to give Barkley at least a breather after that, and Gallman. With a nice run. He's young. He should trot back out on the field right now. I mean, it don't take too many plays off. You're hot. And look at that elevation over the top of the attended tackle by Amos. Look we're, how high he was. We're seeing a lot of this lately, aren't we? Chris Carson we saw last week, Seattle against uh, Carolina. Giants can get a first down inside the four. Man. Looking left, throwing for Beckham Jr. Flag! He was going for Beckham. Amukamara, his buddy and former teammate, was on the coverage. Let's check the penalty. 
think the Giants are going to like this one. Pass interference. Defense, number 20. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Remember the tight coverage earlier in the game by Amuka Mera and Kyle Fuller. And watch Beckham works inside, then uses his own strength to run through some stuff with Amuka Mera and actually drew the attention of the officials with Amuka Mera's hands all over him past the five yard zone. Get a, Giants get, go get jumbo tight, package. Yeah, get a tight end in a fullback before he branches out. Barkley gets it. Barkley not quite there. Aaron Lynch got his hands on him first. And Charles, it's amazing. Giants offense had done nothing. And then almost like a giveaway handoff to run out the clock. Barkley has an amazing run, end up getting a field goal out of it. And it's like they've come to life since then. Changed everything. They became the team that ran to their locker room with enthusiasm at the half. And the Bears looked at each other like, what just happened here? And it's carried over into the second half. This offense operating well on this drive. Extra lineman, two tight ends, a fullback for the Giants. Barkley again, again he's short. Well played by the Bears. Hicks is having a day. Look at that reaction. And a third and goal. Watch the line of scrimmage and how it gets controlled here by the guys in white. See how they push the guys in blue back? And that created a space for Akeem Hicks to come in and wrap up Barkley. There's no way I run the ball here. I find a way to throw it. 12th play of the drive. They fake it. Manning looking, throwing incomplete. That wouldn't have been in anyway. Simonson wasn't even in the end zone. That made no sense. Fourth and goal. And I don't think they're going to kick the field goal. I think they're going to go for it here. Remember, it's a three-win season. Pat Shermer at this point is saying, forget it. We need to find a way to stretch it out. Let's go get it. And Simonson, as you noted, nowhere close to the end zone. That was well defended by Amos. Crowd loves it. Giants go. Fourth and goal. Here we come. Manning to throw, pressure just lost it up for Beckham! Touchdown! So the flow was shown to the right. But watch Beckham come all the way across against the traffic. You see right there, they're running the receivers all the way to the right side of the offense. Run him back left. Touchdown, Giants. 17 unanswered for the New York Giants. Beckham involved heavily. A touchdown pass, and I don't know how Manning saw him here. Pressure in his face, he lobbed it up. Wide open, and Beckham holds it in. And Pat Shermer says, we had it all the way. Giants by 10, 60 yards, and they go for it on fourth and goal. Why not when you're three and eight? And somehow Eli Manning, despite about to be crushed, just lofted it up. Odell Beckham Jr. ran under it, and the Giants have a 10-point lead. Yeah, that was thrown with nice touch, wasn't it? Sure was. So on this drive, it was Barkley with the hurdle, getting everybody excited. And then on fourth down, he just lofted it up there. Two best players for the Giants on offense. Shermer loved it. His team coming to life. Eli Manning feeling good. Look at that. Even the coach is trying to get up there and get a little elevation. Now, how do the Bears respond? Chase Daniel, they've run the ball all day, but Chase Daniel only 7 of 13 for 65 yards and two interceptions. They'll run it again to Howard. So will they stay with the run here? They can. It's only 24-14. Remember in the first half we were talking about how the Bears were taking it to the Giants? It yeah. was only a seven-point game at that point. Didn't need to change a whole lot. You can still do it, but understand what you're going to get from James Betcher, the defensive coordinator of the Giants. You're going to get pressure. And pressure doesn't always mean going and getting the quarterback. On that first down run, 
he brought extra defenders down into the box to try and control the running game. Here comes the blitz. Daniel sees it and it's dropped. Try to get it to Gabriel. Little low, he couldn't hang on in a third down and six. You you mentioned earlier, and here's James Betcher, the defensive coordinator. Even if it's not all out pressure to the quarterback, he's going to try and bring in more people than you can block at the line of scrimmage to try and mess up blocking assignments and find a way to find a gap to get to a ball carrier. Bears only one of eight on third. Blitz coming. Picked up. Daniel completes for a first down. Mizell has the grab and a nice job picking up the Giants blitz. And I know it just seems like another first down, but that was a big one for the Chicago Bears. They have struggled so much on offense lately. And with the pressure coming at Chase Daniel, gets it right over the top of Olivier Vernon. That's a nice catch by Mizell, who they recently promoted back from the practice squad. Scored a touchdown on Thanksgiving Day in Detroit. First down, another blitz coming. Daniel over the middle this time, and it's going to be caught, but Ogletree with the tackle immediately on Gabriel. Let's get a game break. Check in with Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. Panthers showing 24-10 in Tampa, and Cam Newton finds Devin Funches for this 10-yard score. Panthers still trailing 24-17. Kevin Charles and Panthers. Panthers have already lost three in a row, hoping to avoid four. And continue to keep an eye on Cody Whitehair, the center for Chicago. There have been some tough snaps back there. Chase Daniel having to play a little bit of shortstop in order to grab them as they get to him. Daniel, time, line up, and firing complete over the middle. Good pass, and he had good protection as well. It is Robinson. Who's going to move the chains for Chicago and he picks up eight. You get the sense with this Bears offense. The Giants got ignited by their stars. Saquon Barkley Odell Beckham Jr. This Bears team not as many of those on offense knows how the ball is being moved around relying on everyone who gets a chance to make a play and try and move the ball downfield. Go. Pressure coming. Daniel in trouble and he sacks. Second sack of the day for B.J. Hill. The rookie out of NC State. So watch in here. B.J. Hill. This isn't about pressure. That's him using hands very well. Great job going over the guard. Brian Witzman, number 78. A journeyman who they got in the offs. They ended up getting from Kansas City. Had 13 starts there last year. But you see the handwork by B.J. Hill? Showed him his hands, took him away, and got past Witzman for the big play. We talked to Witzman, is playing for Kyle Long, who's been out with an ankle injury. Blitz coming again. Daniel Rolls looking for help. Now he's going to run it himself. He could run it pretty good at Missouri. He's going back to the old days there to avoid a sack. Looked like a league way. Number 45 was the first guy to get back there and flush Chase Daniel. Able to elude him and get outside the pocket and try and make something happen. But it's a third and long now. Leagueway is playing a lot in this second half. Yeah, Tay Davis was the starter there today from Chattanooga, the rookie. Yeah. And I think Davis might have gotten nicked up as that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. We wind it down. Bears are eight and three. They're in first place. They're chasing a first round bye, but they've got work to do because these Giants have found life in this second half. After three quarters at MetLife Stadium, Big Blue showing some. We start the fourth quarter and a big third down for Chicago. Trailing by 10 to the Giants. Blitz is coming. Daniel gets a late block, running for his life. He's in trouble. He is buried. Olivier Vernon comes through. Barwin was there as well. And Vernon is hurt. So it starts with the coverage when you decide to blitz because there's a cost 
two blitzing. And that means you've got to cover guys downfield and make sure that they're not free for a quarterback to find someone quickly. And this, that person's not there. A nice block here by Jordan Howard on a league way. You think that helps out, but because the coverage is so tight, it allows the rushers to still get there. Vernon 54, Barwin 53 stay with the play, and they put Daniel down. Davis going to let this bounce. That time takes a giant bounce, but it's down immediately. Giants football to start the fourth. They're up by 10. The game away. T Mobile has you covered. Here is the playoff picture in the NFC. The Bears 8 and 3. They've got a game and a half lead over the Vikings because Minnesota had that tie with Green Bay. The Vikings are in New England later on the second part of our Fox double, NFL doubleheader. That should be a big game. That's what the Bears are facing here. Down by 10. Giants have the football. Flags fly everywhere. It's Barkley with the run. And Charles, that's the other thing. It's obviously the division trying to keep their lead. But if the Bears can win today, they're only a game behind New Orleans in the chase to get a first round bye. There's a lot on the line here. Holding. Offense. Number 82. 10 yard penalty. First down. That'll help. That's on Scott Simonson. The second hold of the game. His head coach of the Bears, Matt Nagy. And you mentioned the importance of this game. A lot of people think he's actually trying to steal one today with Chase Daniel playing quarterback again. I just think he's being cautious with the investment in their in their second in the number two pick quarterback. Make sure he's healthy. And yes, you do have a little bit of a cushion to play with. The bottom line is he wants him healthy for down the stretch. And he's going to dump it off, and that is well done by Chicago. Amos, the safety, came right up to get Goldman. And a second and long. You know, I think the Giants, Charles, at half just finally had a talk. So, what are we doing? Let's just get it to the best two players. And that's what they've done in the second half. It's been, you know, almost exclusively them. This is the whole game, what they've done. But in the first half, it was really quiet for both of them until that run by Barkley, which was essentially trying to run out the clock. And then they got a late field goal, and it changed everything. And there's your point right there. You just saw it on the screen. And so we'll run it again. Gallman as Barkley gets a little bit of a break on second and 22 and a third and extremely long here. But this is this is huge for Chicago here because the last drive stalled. But if they can hold the Giants here and not give up any type of a big play even before the punt, they've got a chance for good field position for their next drive. Remember, Giants three wins all year. If you can get it to within a three point game. That's now pressure on the Giants. Right now, there's a cushion. They're playing loose and free. And the Bears also have one of the most electric punt returners in the league. Third and 18. Four-man rush. Manning just zings over the middle. It's dropped. Goldman. So Barkley sits out the last couple plays of that series. Not sure if it would have mattered. And now on a fourth and 18, they'll punt. And the clock doesn't tick very long either. No. As we told you, a lot of interest in this game in the NFC North because our next game, America's Game of the Week on Fox. Vikings and Patriots. Most of the country will see that. Some will see the 49ers and the Seahawks who are red hot right now. You see that on Fox or the Fox Sports app. Vikings look great. Cousins had an unbelievable game in beating the Packers last week. Dixon. High. Good punch. Look at this. To the sideline is Cohen. Makes a couple miss. Tariq Cohen, couple penalty flags. Ball is loose. Ball is out. And he's got it back. Rhett Ellison punched it out. Also penalties on the play. So Bears football, but let's see on the flags. I believe we got an official with his hat off on the sideline, which indicates ran out of bounds going downfield trying to cover the punt. I think it was Antonio Hamilton again trying to get away. <laughs> Antonio Hamilton has been working on special teams today. They've been working Antonio Hamilton on special teams. Better today. correction by you. <laughs> He's had a tough go. Let's get the call. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 33, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down, timeout. Looked like a block in the back right there from Joshua Bellamy, number 15 on Antonio Hamilton. Hamilton getting work done. Bears have work to do. Down 10 here in the fourth quarter. 24-14. The Giants lead the Bears. Time now a factor. 
12 33 to go last six possessions for Chicago. Not exactly what you'd want Chase Daniel trying to get this offense going. All day Daniel going deep he's got Cullen open he under throw the Cullen came back to make the grab. And they're going to say he was indeed down. Great adjustment by Tariq Cohen. And it goes for 46. So watch Cohen because the play is made, even his adjustment back to the football. He sees the ball. Landon Collins doesn't see it until late. And Cohen's able to bend inside of him and take the ball away. Now, did he actually get touched on the ground? Now he's got a chance to get up. He's not touched there. And they were blowing the whistle and blew the play dead. But what an adjustment for the catch by Tariq Cohen. They blew the whistle, Charles. So you can't even go back and look at it. You can't review it once that's done. They blew it down, but he was up and moving. That was not a call that should have been made. Here is Daniel in trouble now. Oh, good move. Daniel stays alive. And he's going to find Cohen again. <laughs> Chase Daniel. I didn't know he had that in him a little shake a little sidestep and he made something out of nothing there and not only did he do everything you just described his offensive line and his blockers they stayed with it as well watch Daniel make his moves but watch the blockers okay now when he dances there they continue to stay with the guy see the block there on Barwin by number 70 Bobby Massey nice job by the offensive line staying with Chase Daniel in his movement Jordan Howard in the game they fake it to him Daniel looking on the run and completes it somehow to Bellamy Boy, Grant Haley had pretty good coverage but he got it in there and it's a first down how did he catch that I don't know <laughs> that's a heck of a catch because as you noted Grant Haley and those X Tech pads of his as you see it pop up look at this right through the arms of Kareem Martin he hauls it in with Haley in good coverage, just not able to make a play on the ball, but sneaking it through the arms of Kareem Martin. That was the first trick right there. Eddie Jackson has come in on offense for the Bears. That's him in motion. All kinds of movement. And the Giants just jumped across the line of scrimmage. I don't know if they were drawing. Kareem Martin. Paul Stone. Nope. Offense, number 80. Five yard penalty, first down. For the second time today, Matt Nagy has brought defensive players in offense, and that time, discombobulation. So the penalty's here on Trey Burton. Let's see what happens, because here comes Eddie Jackson in, in motion. And then right there, Burton ends up moving. I think he thought he was free to move in a two-point stance, but there was motion going across it, and then that's what caused the penalty. It's like, it's like they're running the same, same play. Fake to Jackson. Daniel hangs in, going for Broniker. Incomplete. Broniker, the third tight end on the roster, looking for a flag. But he won't get one. BW Webb, good coverage. I think it's fortunate that this doesn't get picked off. They've got a chance to make a play on the football. Nice coverage by BW Webb, number 23, into the body. And look, coming over the top is Michael Thomas, number 31, the extra safety. If that ball's thrown a little bit more inside, Thomas may have a chance to make a play on it. Good coverage downfield by the Giants. Daniel, pressure coming. Sees it going for the end zone. Nowhere near Trey Burton. Trey Burton doesn't have a catch today. Tight end's been an integral part of their offense this year. Team I five receiving touchdowns. Now a third and 15. Daniel sets it up on the screen. Cohen. Cohen. Nowhere to go, but a flag flies in from behind the play. No, this is obviously a big call. Cohen not near a first. They need 10 points anyway. 
So a field goal would be fine. Typically this isn't good for the offense in this situation. You often get blocks in the back on those types of plays when it was defended that well. Matt Nagy does not like it. Cody Parkey is already warming up at midfield. Nice job there by B.W. Webb 23 and see Pass how he stays with it. Offense number 18. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. But how about B.W. Webb right there on the corner? Not fooled. Stays right with it. Plays off the block of Taylor Gabriel and makes the play anyway. Nagy can't believe it. Doesn't like the call. It was nowhere near a first down anyway. And again, Charles, they need 10 points, so they got to have a field goal at some point. Exactly. Exactly. But now it's Parkey, who has had his struggles on and off this year. He's missed five of his 22 kicks. Against Detroit, he hit the upright four times. Two field goals and two PATs. This one will be from 36 yards. Get the Bears within seven. That one is perfect. So the Bears get part of what they needed. It is a one score game with 925 to go from the good game here at MetLife. Giants trying to pull the upset. Bears down 10, just got a field goal. Long way to go. And what, what happened now? Parkey looking to kick off. Whistle blows. Please set the play clock to 25 seconds. The whistle had not blown to mark the play ready. I have to say, I think that that really upset Clay Martin. He looked angry. Yeah, he's not happy. If the he, referee. This game doesn't start until I blow the whistle. <laughs> I mean, he did not look Perry. happy. Hey, he's had he's got control of the game, and there he understands how tight it is down the stretch. I like that taking control. Yes. Well done, Clay. So now Parkey will kick it off for real. Here's Coleman looking to take it out. Had a big return last week. Not this time, and now multiple flags on this play too. Giants may be starting inside their own 10. During the return, holding, receiving team number 82. Penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. First down. This January on Fox, a thrilling new series from executive producer Ridley Scott and starring Mark, Mark Paul Gosselin. Can one girl save humanity? Based on the best-selling trilogy, The Passage premieres this January on Fox. We were watching the trailer last night. Pam Oliver is into it. <laughs> Fired up. How about Mark Paul transitioning? Brett, Here are the Giants up by seven. Looking to add on. Not much for Barkley. Game break. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee. Well, a nice day for Chase Edmonds of the Arizona Cardinals. Had no touchdowns coming in, did the rookie. He's got two in Green Bay. This one giving the Cardinals a touchdown lead in the fourth quarter over the Packers. Of course, Kevin and Charles and Cam, I know you know, he went to Fordham. Yes, I was just about to say that. How about that? A Ram. They'll, they'll receive this news nicely here, but they're really focused on their Giants, Kurt. Second and eight. It's a blitz. It's picked up. Manning sees it, hits it, first down. It's Shepard. Sterling Shepard, that is. It's a good call there, partner. Watch the offensive line, and here it is. And look at Barkley right there. Roll into the block and keep him away. And look at Shepard. He's been hurt a couple of times today. Looks like a, a midsection injury. Still ran that route. Very it's physical route he ran. And look at the Barkley work his way through to push the defender away from his quarterback. So a first down. Eight minutes to go. Draw to Barkley up the middle. Barkley fighting. And a lot of work for maybe two yards. And now Barkley is hurt. Oh boy. And that's rookie on rookie. That's Roquan Smith, the rookie out of Georgia, the Bears' first-round pick, and obviously Barkley, the number two pick in the entire draft, matching up there. 
in a one on one tackle in the open field. They get a look at Saquon Barkley, which means Wayne Gallman, when they want to have the running back in the game, will now be on the field for the Giants wearing number 22. So hopefully, Barkley's okay, but not out there when the Giants really need him. They will give it to Gallman. Stretch near side. He is going nowhere. Bears stack it up. Callahan from the corner, Goldman on the line, and everyone else. And a third down coming up. I mean, Khalil Mack just stacked that play at the line of scrimmage, the point of attack. What a play he made where there was no place for Goldman to run. Not outside, couldn't bounce it. And when he tried to stay inside, here came the pursuit. Watch 52 and white. Look at him get upfield, work against Red Ellison. So he holds a point of attack there. Where do you go? Goldman, I can't get outside. Here's Bryce Callahan. Nice job, Callahan. Goldman, 91, also assisted. Third down and 11. Manning, time, near side. It is complete. And it should be, let's see, a first down, right? Where's the mark? It's going to be close. Looks from here, it's a first down. Benny Fowler with the catch on the cross. And he will indeed have the first. How about the effort by Fowler here? You see what happened with Eddie Jackson on the tackle. You've got to have your head in front of the ball carrier in order to keep him from getting to where he wants to go. When your head's behind, he can still pursue right through and pick up the first down. You know what I love about you as a partner? You actually just demonstrated the tackle <laughs> in the booth. I'm still upright, folks. <laughs> Good play, man. And your side incomplete. And maybe better off because Danny Trevathan had, had a pick six written all over it. it Second down. Six oh eight to go. Each team with all their timeouts left. And Saquon Barkley is going to get checked out in the medical tent. That's what he's done today. That Most of that in the second half. That takes away another big option in the passing game, both in protection and getting out of the backfield. Give it to Gallman. Wayne Gallman. Nice move. Wayne Gallman. Shoulder down. And a good run. As he's going to pick up eight and a half. And brings up a third and short. Excellent run by Gallman. Able to cut it back. And just go straight ahead. And let bodies scatter. And brings it up to a third. And very manageable now for the Giants. And their offensive line's done a very nice job here down the stretch. Of protecting Eli Manning and giving him opportunities. Beckham goes out of the game. They bring on an extra tight end, and we get a whistle. And they will remark it. I think the ball wind might have blown the ball a little bit. There is Beckham. They're showing heavy set here, aren't they? They are. That always makes me suspicious in this in this situation for a quick play action and throw it out in the flat. Matt Nagy is going ballistic right now on the Bears sideline. I think he feels like the play clock got reset. That happened, Billy. It did. So I don't know why they reset the play clock, but Matt Nagy saw and said, "What's going on?" The ball got kicked at the line of scrimmage. All right. So when they had set the ball, the ball got kicked and moved, and I think that's when the officials were trying to blow things dead to get the ball reset. And I think everyone got a little bit discombobulated in that sequence. But obviously in a one score game when every second is going to matter that's yeah. when you're down 24 17 you want those seconds. That's why Negi went over and got the attention so they're going to talk it over. Please set the game clock to 530 and the play clock to 15. Both clocks will start on my signal. And see, that's well done by Clay Martin and his crew. And Nagy called him. That's a big difference. I mean, 30 seconds. Pat Shermer saying set the play clock at 4:30. We have 5:30. Let's move this thing along. Third down and one. They'll fake the throw, the run. Eli Manning hits Simonson. The third tight end on the roster hauls it in. Scott Simonson, out of Middletown South High School, a Jersey guy. And he moves the chains for New York. And he needed this one in a big way. Scott Simonson's had three penalties in this game. But he came up big for the Giants when they flat out needed it. And what a contested catch he made with Prince of Mucamara coming up behind him trying to knock the ball free. 
Third and short, they fake it inside. Simonson becomes the hero out right in the flat. Back. Fake the run. Manning coming back the near side to Ellis and the other tight end against Mack. First down in the Giants in field goal range. It's a big drive without Saquon Barkley. And how about this? This is the this is the design of the play. That looked like the pre previous play. All right, it looked like all the flow here, right? But watch how they come back against flow now after showing the previous one where they picked it up. Ellison shows fake block, come back the other way. Excellent scheme by Pat Shermer. Just played off of the previous one where he picked up the first down. Gets another big play there. What a Snap it with nine on the play clock. Gallman cuts it back inside. A couple yards, that's it. Plenty of time left as we can see. But how about what the Giants are doing to the number one defense in the NFL here in the second half of this game? Controlling the football, taking care of the football, grinding the clock down, and continuing to hold on to their lead, picking up key first downs along the way. Talk about controlling the line of scrimmage. No bear sacks in this second half either. Fake the run again. This time pressure from Matt. Manning in trouble. Throws it away. Was there anyone in the vicinity? Was he out of the tackle box? But well, I don't that, think it got back to the line of scrimmage. It did not get to the line of scrimmage. It, now they've got to determine was he outside the tackle box. There's no foul for intentional grounding as number 85 was in the area. Third down. So Eli, when he comes out here, he's going to get the pressure because here comes Khalil Mack. And he takes him even deeper. But right there... It's Red Ellison. And when he throws the football, they're going to call that. <laughs> and Khalil Mack saying, that looks more like grounding to me. Let's be honest. That's a grounding. That, that's a very liberal they, interpretation they, of not They not won't grounding. call it? No. And they, and they never call that? No. But that is grounding. But the one thing it did do, Charles, though. Stop the clock. Yeah. And the Bears, with three timeouts left, down seven. Giants already in field goal range. A critical juncture here. Saquon Barkley has come back on the field. But they have a ton of confidence in Rosas right now. They should. I mean, this guy has been something else coming into this ball game. He's Only one miss on the season. Third down and eight first. Pressure, man. In trouble on his second. And that may have taken him out of field goal range. It was Khalil Mack. The one thing you cannot do in this situation is take the sack and hurt your field position. And Khalil Mack just goes right past Chad Wheeler and gets to Eli Manning. I am surprised, though, that the way that they were running the offense, run the ball inside and give Rosas a chance and make it a 10-point game. Instead, they're going to have to punt the ball away and give the Bears a chance, as you noted, with three timeouts. And only down seven at this point. Now, the other thing is Rosas has a 57-yard field goal in this game, and he yep. was hitting from 61 routinely. So they could try it, but they're electing to punt. What a monumental play by Khalil Mack. And they will let the play clock run down, and they will move back five yards. Delay a game. Offense, number nine. That penalty is declined. Or they won't. Fourth down. Well, they, they wanted to add the extra yardage because it helps the cushion for the punt for the punter. But the Bears alertly and smartly turned it down to eliminate that extra five yards for him to place it. It's a much harder punt closer in. We've shown you Mac today. He's made some great plays. Charles setting the edge earlier, but his first sack of the game comes at the most important time. Now it's Dixon to punt it away. Cohen lets it go over his head. And the Giants save it. I think they did. Wow. Russell Shepard. With some help from Antonio Hamilton, what a job! Toe in the line, let's see. He did not hit the line. Hamilton didn't either. What a job! This was an incredible play by Russell Shepard. Look how close he was to touching that end line. But he kept it in, and so the Bears, if they want to win this game or at least tie it, They've got to go all the way. Plenty of time. 226, and they do have three timeouts. Dan 
will start it off to Gabriel, who fumbled the football, and the Giants recover! Sean Chandler on the recovery! See how he goes down like you were taught in Little League to secure a catch? on a ground ball and then he comes up and he makes the football move that we hear about all the time secured Double the catch ball. started running bw webb pops the ball free sean chandler with the recovery look at webb right there with the right hand knocking the ball free as gabriel moved upfield to me that's a catch fumble all day long there's no question i don't think that one's even close and charles you think about it this bears team number one in the league in plus minus all year Minus two today. Giants can still void tough, he'll void proud. So here is the Gabriel fumble. Just to give you an idea, the rules of the catch. Control the ball, two feet or a body part down, and a football move. Clearly, he had all that. The football move was him jetting forward off his knee. That is a no-doubt fumble. Check, 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 and then B.W. Webb, tremendous job. He had a couple struggles early in this game, but he made some big-time plays. For the Giants, none bigger than that one there, knocking the ball free for Sean Chandler to recover. So the Giants trying to salt this away up by seven. They give it to Barkley up the middle, and now breaking through inside the 10 is Barkley. And the Bears, who have all three timeouts left and the two minute warning, will use one. Charles, we said we said it going to break. These Bears have been number one in the league, plus another plus 14 coming into today, minus two today. They had an interception return for a touchdown, the second play of the game, and and you go back to that timeout for the half, don't you? I do. I keep coming back to that, and I know that it may or may not. You know, Matt Nagy may say no, that wasn't it, but when they ended up using that timeout, and then the Giants ended up kicking the field goal right before the half, it almost felt like they didn't really recover from that. Yeah. They weren't the same team in the second half. All credit to the Giants controlling the second half. With a team that only won three games coming into this one, they've been impressive here. Not over yet. Barkley bounces it to the outside. Penalty flag, and Barkley is taken down. Here's another flag flies. And he went out of bounds. So, wow, a lot happening there. I think there are three flags on the field. Might be a hold. Might also be a face mask on the Bears at the end of that play. And then Barkley stopped the clock. The penalties would have done it anyway, but in that situation, just go down. Mm -hmm. No penalties. You want Holding. that clock moving. Or Offense, time number 39, 10-yard penalty, replay the down. Hmm. Well, there was definitely a penalty away from the original penalty. That's what Pat Shermer saying, saying, wait a second. What so about the one on the other right, side of the Right field? in the middle, you're going to see this grab by Eli Penny right there. See the right hand working on Aaron Lynch, and then he... Gets a shoulder into him for the rest of the takedown. And that's what was called. Let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Would you decline that? I mean, that gives him another down. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you want the ball because now you give him the extra down, that's extra time. So it is Barkley who has a short game. So we've hit the two-minute warning. From MetLife Stadium, the Bears hasn't been their day. The Giants trying to finish this one and pull the upset. 24-17, two minutes to go. I drink and ride your horse. Russell Shepard on your left has had a good day, caught a touchdown, made a special teams player two. Alec Ogletree, two interceptions, one for a touchdown. Right, Beckham thrown one and caught one. Giants up seven, looking to add to the lead on third and long. They give it to Barkley. And the Bears, with two timeouts, will call one here with 1.53 to go. And now, look at, look at that, Charles. We talked all half about the Bears being committed to the run. 106 yards rushing in the first half, five in the second half. Very surprising, to put it mildly, because they were running it so effectively in the first half, you would think that they continue to grind it. But I think that sequence right at the end of the first half and the field goal by the Giants and the Giants get the ball the second second half and set the pace. I think it knocked the Bears a little bit off balance and out of filter in terms of running offense. This is what this was a, a handoff to run out the clock. Make no mistake. And Barkley, because he's amazing, just did this and turned it into a fourth and short. And and they said, okay, well, we got what? Eight seconds left. Let's go for it. They converted and they kicked a 57-yard field goal. And you're right, it just changed the whole field. So now here is Rosas 
who's missed one total kick all year as a 57 yarder today this from 37 to make it a two score game perfect what a year he's had 10 point game with 149 to go And while we have a moment here before the kick, let's check in with Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin Len. You guys know what's coming up next. It's America's Game of the Week. Kirk Cousins getting warmed up there. He's on the road in Foxborough where the Patriots are undefeated at home so far this year. Tom Brady, he's fired up. Joe Troy and Aaron have the call. It's all coming up next. Carissa, thanks. Look forward to that. Obviously, Vikings fans pretty happy what's going on here. So if this holds and a Minnesota can win in New England no easy task Minnesota's a half game out that tie makes it interesting remember Chicago just beat Minnesota and when do they play again last game of the season week 17 in Minnesota oh boy that that one could mean something but right now focus is here because the Chicago Bears if indeed they are unable to narrow this gap and find a way the Rams are a Sunday night game back home in Chicago then they get Green Bay at home as well before finishing the season I think Mitchell Trubisky will be back for that game their starting quarterback has missed the last two Daniel played great last week he has not had a good game here today a couple of interceptions one for a touchdown but it's certainly not all on him no. there's been a lot of mistakes that the Bears haven't made for most of the year here today so now they need a lot of help with a minute 49 to go Bears have made mistakes, but I think this Giants defense really came to play right from the beginning with Ogletree with the interception, James Betcher, the defensive coordinator, making sure he mixed the, 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 the blitzing, not just for the pass game, but also to take away the running lanes as well. And that really worked for them effectively in the second half. Last chance for Chicago. Dano to throw. Robinson makes a catch and a move, and he is forced out of bounds. See where they put him out. Right about the 44 looks like with 142 to go. And Bears saved their last time out. Bonus coverage of the Packers and Cardinals. That being tied with 148 to go. It's Arizona's football. And they are down in Greenberry, Green Bay territory with a chance for the game winning field goal, it looks like. Keep you updated there. We'll go there when this one's over. Daniel pressure coming gets rid of it and it's Cohen across midfield out of bounds stopping the clock with 136 to go so you're going to need an onside kick so it doesn't really matter whether you get the field goal or the touchdown first you need two scores you need help and you need it in 136 Giants more than willing to concede anything underneath. They'd love to tackle him in bounds and make them use their last time out. Flex, 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 Liz, Liz, Liz. Yellow, yellow. Go. Go. Blitz coming. Daniel hit as he throws. It's a wobbler, but it gets to Cohen down the sidelines. And there's a penalty, too, around the quarterback. How did Daniel get that there as he was getting hit? Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 36, will enforce the penalty half the distance to the goal. First down. See how he went low at the legs of Chase Daniel? That's where the call came. Sean Chandler, number 36, who had recovered the fumble earlier. And as you noted, how did the heck did that ball come out with enough to get there to Tariq Cohen after taking that hit? That was impressive from Daniel. The Bears aren't done yet. 32 yards and then add on the 15 yard penalty. And here they are, first and goal from the eight with 128 to go. They have not had to use the timeout either. Looking, throwing, looking for Robinson incomplete. A good coverage by BW Webb has had himself a nice day. Had struggles early. You remember, remember that great catch Robinson made over the top of him? When it looked like he's interfering, did not buy the inside fake, stayed right with it, and goes outside and contests the pass. An excellent day by B.W. Webb, especially from the second half on. Yeah. 
Second and goal. Daniel firing incomplete. Anthony Miller intended for the rookie. It is his first target all day. As Mitchell Trubisky looks on. I think he felt the crowd around him on this one because it's a little bit high, but it's a pass that he can catch and needs to catch in that situation. But I think he felt the blue shirts closing in and took his eyes off of the football. Third and goal. Daniel gets it out to Cohen. He's not going to get there. Giants hold him out. It's Webb again. So do you just take the field goal here, or do you? You're going to need it at some point. Take the points now and come back. The hard part, though, is either way, onside kick with the new kickoff rules is very difficult to get. But take the field goal now and then come back and try and get it. Yeah, I, You've got to have the points. Doesn't I, matter either way. I think they were thinking about it. Chase Daniel was kind of making a case. Hey, we're down here. But what was the upside? You know, if you miss it, you're totally done. Take the field goal now, keeps you in it. It's all comes down to they make this the onside kick because there actually is plenty of time and they got a timeout. First, have to have this from Parkey. And the kick is up and good. So they do the first part, 21 yard field goal. If they somehow recover this, they got plenty of time. But just know that the new onside, the new kickoff rules. Have really limited onside kicks in terms of being successful. They have. And don't forget, NFL coverage continues. America's game of the week next on Fox. Kirk Cousins and the Vikings battling the Patriots. Some will see the Niners and the Seahawks who are working their way into the playoffs. Right here on Fox or the Fox Sports app. Some good ones right there. Seahawks got some momentum going, but that pit, that Vikings Patriots game in Foxborough, that is going to be sensational. But I believe someone just just told us I believe our, our stats just told us three for 38 this year and onside kicks NFL league wide. Remember you can't these guys can't approach the line of scrimmage fast right they don't get the run up to it. You know that you had in the past you have to limit the numbers of guys outside the numbers inside the numbers you can't overload it's difficult. Giants can grab this they'll win it. <laughs> it's the second time in this quarter. And that is because the Part Giants call a timeout. timeout. New York, 30 seconds. So, look, you, you just laid it out there. Onside kicks are pretty hard to come by right now. Let's just take the Giants' point of view. I know it hasn't been pretty at all times, but since the bye, if they hold on here, they're three and one. Yeah. And yeah. we got the feeling they thought they were making progress. And this is validation if indeed they do finish this one off. I don't care about where the record is now mm -hmm. as you mentioned three and one under a new head coach a new general manager and Dave Gettleman Pat Shermer the head coach it's a new system a new regime that way you can sell that to your guys in the offseason hey we stayed the course it started to work down the stretch let's see what happens the rest of the way first they got to grab this onside kick and the Giants took that timeout like a basketball timeout kind of see the alignment and try and anticipate where they think they're going with the ball. It's a good one. It's up there. I think Chicago has it. They have it. Do you believe it? Daniel Brown, the tight end. Only the fourth onside kick recovered in the entire league this year. Let's see. Does Odell Beckham charge the football, or does he end up letting it play him? The second row has to get the football. He's got to be over there right now and go get this thing. So you charge that one like a shortstop on a slow hit grounder. You've got to go get it. And he's trying to brand, see how he's with his hand. He's trying to brush the ball over the sideline and get through it. Why? He's not even trying to see that. He's trying to swipe it through Daniel Brown. Brown's got the football and the Bears have hope. Unbelievable. And so Chicago, they've got plenty of time. They need a touchdown, but a minute 13 and they have one timeout. Now it's Daniel standing in over the middle. It's Cohen flag flies from the secondary first down for Tariq Cohen inside the 40. Let's see what the penalty is against the Giants. I believe that's holding in the secondary. Prior to the pass holding defense number 31 that penalty is declined first down. 
You know we showed you they haven't run the ball in the second half but Tariq Cohen has caught plenty. He's now over 100 yards receiving. He's run it well after he's caught it. <laughs> That's true. Chase Daniel meanwhile calm and collected. Can he pull this off. Need a touchdown to tie. In trouble looking around running and now he's going to get sacked. He chooses not to throw it away. And the Bears with one timeout, will they use it? Looks like they will. And that's one I know he's going to go to the sideline, and Matt Nagy's not going to belabor the point, but throw this one away. Save the time for your team. Don't take the sack and end up using the timeout. Ogletree with the coverage there, a little tug on Robinson. He's going to complain that won't be called ever. See right there, Ogletree going through. Cohen trying to work inside, but there was not enough time there for Daniel. He was already being engulfed. They give credit to that sack to B.J. Hill. Is that a big game? That is his third sack. He had two coming in, the rookie from North Carolina. Good drama here in the Meadowlands with 59 seconds to go. Bears need a timeout. Excuse me. They need a touchdown to tie up. They're out of timeouts. Penalty flag. Beat the Giants were offside. Daniels batted down at the line. But I believe the Giants jumped. Yeah, B.J. Hill batted it down, but it looked like on the bottom of the offside. screen they jumped. Defense, number 52. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Ogletree's been magnificent for most of the game. Draws a penalty at the worst possible time. Two interceptions. Former safety turned linebacker from Georgia. It's an outstanding contest. But that one will not help his guys in blue. And there's Cohen. 136 total yards today. Second down. Daniel slings it near side. Good tackle in bounds. Gabriel caught it. But he was tackled by Michael Thomas. And so the clock runs. They can't stop it. They've got no timeouts. And he's short of the first. So it's third and one. Daniel incomplete. It was a little in front of Gabriel and hang on there's a penalty at the far side of the field. I wonder if they were set. You know and you're moving that fast where they set long enough. In order to run that play successfully. Let's look. See look at Rob Robinson's moving. He's moving laterally towards excuse me Bellamy 15. Yep. But when he got out there, I wonder if they're calling him for not coming set when he would get try to get into a stance. You have to be set for one second. Right. But he was moving lateral. He would have been fine if he just stayed in motion, I think. But it looked like he's trying to come set. Number 15 of the offense never got set. You were which right. is an illegal shift. Inside of two minutes, that is a false start. Please set the game clock to 38 seconds. There will be a 10-second runoff, and the clock will start on my ready. 38 to 28 please 38 to 28 so they, they lost five seconds on the play and the yardage obviously because they used five seconds on the incompletion so that's where they are 28 seconds left now from the 35 with no timeouts they've been running a lot of tight formations trying to bring the crowd inside I think they've got to take their shot downfield now Daniel pressure comes gets rid of it it's caught by Shaheen that's not going to get much he's out of bounds but that's at this point almost a waste of time So 17 seconds ago and that will be a fourth down coming up I'd like to welcome those of you who saw Arizona pull the upset in Green Bay this has been a wild game the Giants have led for most of the second half and the Bears need a touchdown with 17 seconds left and no timeouts Allen Robinson specialty number 12 playing jump balls I'd get him down to the end zone and give him an opportunity fourth down this is a game Daniel pressure coming Daniel's gonna lock it for Cohen he's got it inside the 10 with 11 seconds to go watch Cohen 29 he's working on Landon Collins their pro bowl safety beats him with a move to the outside and a well thrown football by Chase Daniel 
right over the top of Collins 21. Cohen catches it and gets out of bounds to give them another opportunity. Ten catches, 143 yards for Tariq Cohen, and the Bears have life. 11 seconds left. And he's down. Oh, sorry. Excuse me, that's Gabriel. Play clock at four. They get it off. Daniel throws end zone incomplete with seven seconds to go. And really now you have to go to the end zone. Sack, anything else, the game's over. Done. But watch BW Webb number 23. Stays with his recoverage. Gets one move and then stays there and gets away with a little bit of a grab there. But not going to be called. See his right hand down there on the hip. Ooh. And the ball goes through. May be the last play of the game. Seven seconds. Daniel going end zone incomplete. And a flag flies. With three seconds left, Webb was on the coverage on Robinson. Well, they went where you would expect them to go. They went to their high flyer, which is Allen Robinson outside. But boy, this is a tough call. In this coverage, look at him. He is playing the football, but he goes right through the back of the receiver. Defense, number 23. The ball will be placed at the one-yard line. First down. And I know that people are saying at home, well, was that catchable? Well, yes, because he took away the opportunity to go up and try and catch the football. It's either the last play of the game or we're kicking an extra point maybe to tie it. What are the Bears trying? Three seconds to play. Well, they won't try anything yet. The Giants will call a timeout. <laughs> so Matt Nagy, who is as good a play caller as their league, this is, uh, I'll call this a money play call, Charles. Let's just get clarification. Dean Blandino on the call. Dean, our rules expert from L.A. Charles brought up a good point about the ball. Catchable ball. Can you just go through that with us? Yeah, so, so the ball is catchable. That thing would have to be airmailed for it not to be catchable. And it's a tough spot for the defender because he does have an equal right to the football. And he looks like he's playing the ball, but he can't play through the back. And you watch that left arm around the back of the receiver. It's a good call. Thanks, Dean. Three seconds to go. There's Cohen. Burton to Cohen. Looking to throw it. And he's got the touchdown. Again, another Chicago special. <laughs> Except he's not throwing it. He became the initiator off of the handoff, the toss to Cohen. And look at that. He sets another record for the smallest player in NFL history to throw a touchdown pass. This for the tie. Parkey. Extra point is good. We are going to overtime. I asked if it was a money play call. That's about as money as it gets. <laughs> so it, whatever you was, was going to be run, you figured Cohen had to figure into it, but did not see this coming. I'm not going to sit here and give you revisionist history. Nice toss. Cohen coming around. Your first thought is he's going to run an end around and try and get to the end zone. And then he tosses it. And now we've got a tie ball game. But look at Miller having to fight his way through Haley, the nickelback, and works his way free across the field and presents a nice target for Cohen to find. <laughs> How about that? Think about the things that had to happen to get us here. The Bears were down 10. They went down, hit the field goal. Got the onside kick. It's only the fourth onside kick in the entire league all year. Look how close that was for Landon Collins to have knocked that away. That just snuck through. And that's all they needed for Anthony Miller to give them a chance to tie it up. Miller's had one target all day. So Cohen has been a beast. 
129 yards receiving. It's actually higher. We didn't. I think it's 140. Yeah. 143. Look at the total yards, and then the touchdown pass. Let's check the coin toss. We go to overtime. Tails. Tails is the call. It is heads. Going to take the football. Which way we're going to kick? So, we go to overtime. The last play of regulation. Tariq Cohen, a touchdown pass to Anthony Miller. Can the Bears pull out a miracle at MetLife? Overtime will tell us. Tariq Cohen has done it all in this second half. OT coming next. We'll go back a long time. They've played in multiple championships. We're talking back in the 30s and 40s here. And this is great. Look at these pictures. I love it. The old yearbooks, 56 NFL championship, 63. Is that YA Tittle in that picture? And, and, and maybe this year these teams have been going in different directions, but it looked like the Giants had this sewed up for the upset. I mean, the Bears had the ball with 149 left with one timeout to go and down 10 and they needed an onside kick which only three in the entire league have been recovered. They got it all and they scored on the last play regulation on a halfback toss from Tariq Cohen. Don't forget the 30 seconds Matt Nagy got him to put back on the clock. Huge. Giants have won the toss and they will start overtime with the football. Remember overtime if the Giants score a touchdown they win. Here are the rules. So we've already had the toss. The Giants don't score a touchdown. Well then we'll keep going. It's only 10 minutes. That's why we've had a lot more ties in the league. Goes quick, so that's a factor as well. Yeah, you think to yourself, seriously, one one possession. It's really it, right? One possession is what you're thinking. So whatever you've got in your arsenal, you need to pull it out now. Well, the Bears have showed their magic now. Can Eli pull out some magic of his own? With Barkley in the game. Saquon Barkley gets a toss. Saquon Barkley with a first down and a lot more. Barkley still going. Saquon Barkley. What a run. They mark him out at the 46 yard line. It's a gain of 29. Every time you think that progress has been stopped, think again. Nice block there by Wheeler. Nice block by Penny. And then Beckham downfield doing an excellent job blocking Fuller and then coming off of Fuller and blocking Eddie Jackson. Good vision by Barkley following some excellent blocking from his teammates. Barkley takes a break. They're almost in field goal range with how Rosas was kicking him today. He already has a 57 yarder. Man, pressure. Steps up, throws. Shepard juggled, held on. And Sterling Shepard picks up five yards. And there's Barkley, ready to get ready to go back in. And I'm sure he's coming in right now. Eli Manning, happy to see 26 trotting on the field. But you just pointed out, Kevin, that they're in field goal, you know, close to field goal range. Pat Shermer's not even thinking that right now. You know why? Kick a field goal, game continues. Very, you very still have true. to see so you have to stop Chicago. He's got to think about finishing this thing off right now and not needing that guy on your screen. Right, that. Off. Second and five. Markley churning forward, and it'll be a third down and short. What a wild game. Think about this, Charles. We've had a wide receiver throw a touchdown, Odell Beckham. We've had a halfback throw a touchdown, Tariq Cohen. We've had a nose tackle, a one yard run. We've had Al Gogol trade the linebacker with a pick six. <laughs> Just bonkers. And how about that? Odell Beckham trying to get the crowd to quiet down so they can run offense. That's a sound that they've been waiting to hear for a while here in, in this stadium. Having this crowd into it. We're going to let this clock run down with just confusion. And each team gets two timeouts in overtime. They're going to use one of them here. You know, there's been a lot of Bears fans here today, Charles. Quite honestly, after Rosas hit that field goal go up by 10, a lot of Giants fans left. I mean, the Bears fans. Yeah. <laughs> he took off and went, right? And Giants fans, too, thinking they had it sewn Thinking up. it was over. Thinking it was sewn up. Uh, still plenty of people here. A lot of orange in this crowd at MetLife right now. 7.59 to go in the overtime. Again, they're in field goal range already, but if they kick a field goal, the Bears will have a chance to match that. They score a touchdown, it's over. Bartley out there by himself at the top. Man, 
back. Rose Shepard's got a first down inside the 30. He got hurt in the first half, and he's had some big catches in the second half. There is a toughness to Sterling Shepard that is probably underappreciated around the league. You mentioned him being hurt, playing through it after he came back after Pam Oliver reported on his injury. He came back and has continued to play, and every catch you know hurts because it was a midsection injury. Mm -hmm. And he's still going into the middle of the field, taking contact and creating That's first it. downs. Blitz coming. They pitch on the run. Barkley looking for blocks. Gets a couple inside the 25. And Charles is Bears defense number two in the NFL in scoring. They've got to make a stand here. They've had a hard time making a stand the entire second half. The ability to run the football has helped out Eli Manning and the Giants in, in throwing the ball as well. And also third and short faking it inside throwing it downfield Pat Shermer creating some plays as well with his play calling. Meanwhile Saquon Barkley 23 carries 128 yards rushing third straight game over 100 yards running the ball. Quick count Barkley in trouble slips. Good stalemate Danny Trevathan kind of met him in the hole and then Barkley slipped and it, it was a stalemate wasn't it. They both stopped in the hole. Which way are you going. Which way are you going. Watch watch Trevathan 59. All right, they come here. Watch him almost come to a standstill after the after the handoff. Okay, which way? Which way? Which way? Which way? <laughs> it's like the Wild Wild West. <laughs> Make your move. <laughs> but with that, a third and six. Have had Beckham touch the ball lately. Bear show blitz. Back off, man, going for it. Oh! Complete. Shepard was there, just couldn't get there. And a fourth down. Looks like a field goal try coming up. So close to this game being over. Look at Shepard working inside on Bryce Callahan, the nickelback. Works him outside and he gives him a clear path inside. And the ball hits him in the hands and he can't haul it in. He had to lay out a little bit, but still, that's a catchable football. He's got to make that catch. It's a catchable football. That's one where every receiver will tell you, hit you there, you've got to haul it in. Rosas to give the Giants the lead from 44 yards out in overtime. Boy, he has been perfect right down the middle. So Rosas gives the Giants the lead, but the Bears will get a chance to tie or win it when we come back. Settle for a field goal from Rosas. So now all eyes will be on Tariq Cohen because he has been unbelievable, including the game tying touchdown pass with no time left on the clock in regulation. That's right, pass. 173 total yards. So the Bears will get it. They kick a field goal, keep playing. If not, Giants win. And if the Bears get a touchdown, they win. But time a factor, 557 to go in this overtime. For those of you who are tuning in to see America's Game of the Week, Vikings and Patriots, I promise we'll get you there after this, but this has been too good of a game, so we're going to hang here and see how this one turns out first. As Chase Daniel, can he be even more of a hero than he's been in this fourth quarter? And Tariq Cohen, number 29, who has been the hero for Chicago, even if he's not touching the football, when he's on the field, he affects things because you have to take your attention to him. Although he's not on the field for this play. It is Jordan Howard right up the middle. And Jordan Howard with a good run is going to pick up seven on first down. Can't imagine Cohen will stay on the sidelines for very long, though. The way that they've run offense with him. Matt Nagy has a different plan in place for the moment. But bet the 29 will be out there soon. Well, Howard had a big first half and then the whole team quiet running in the second half. He's got 76 rushing on the day. Oh, fumble on the ground. Daniel in trouble and he's sacked. It is Haley from the corner and went right through the wickets. And a big play. We've talked about this throughout the game. Cody Whitehair with some of his snaps. And that Chase Daniels had to be a little bit more of a shortstop. And that went a little bit low. And it goes right through the wickets as you described and messes up the timing of the play. A nine yard loss and a third down and 12. Obviously it's four down territory. Here's Cohen in the game now. Oh. 
blitz picked up for a second. Now they get it to Cohen, who gets to the edge, but it's not going to be close to a first. He's going to pick up three, so a fourth and long. Game on the line. Fourth and seven. And it's not James Betcher's nature, the defensive coordinator of the Giants, to sit back. It's more of his nature to go get it. And that could open things up if they're able to block it, and he'll have time. Tariq Cohen not in the game. Fourth down. Daniel hangs in, fires, and it is complete! Unbelievable Robinson in traffic for first down. And went counter to what I expected because the Giants decided to lay back and just have the defensive line rush the passer. Excellent move by Robinson, even better catch with B.W. Webb all over his back. Look at him contesting the throw, and Robinson wrestles it away. But Daniel had more time to throw than I expected. He has been excellent in tight coverage today. Bears stay alive. Daniel, Al Cohen in the game, out of the backfield, and a nice pickup on first. Out across the 45 to the 46, he's got eight. The 12th catch of the day for Tariq Cohen. You do get the sense from the Giants sideline that they're trying to do everything defensively to not play man on Tariq Cohen. Because that's where he really wreaks havoc. They're trying to play a more zone and have a few more bodies around him in the area. Fumble on the play, it's loose! And the Bears recover. Mizell, second fumble of the drive. Let's see where this one is. Snaps there. It's, a, it's in a spot where he can grab it. He's unable to get it. Ball's right there. See his eyes kind of already checking out where the rush was coming from and where the handoff would take place. See that heavy miss, though? You got to imagine the ball's wet. Certainly Daniel's helmet is wet. Anyway, third and four. Watch Landon Collins, 21, going in motion with Tariq Cohen. Play clock at two. Daniel in trouble. Sack! The ball is loose! And the Bears recover. So they will at least have a chance for a fourth down conversion. Three fumbles on the same drive, and they got all of them. Look at that. Olivier Vernon from the backside beats Charles Leno upfield to knock the football loose and definitely got it before the arm was coming free. That was a loose ball free. And Chase Daniel chases it down. How many times do you see three fumbles on the same drive all recovered by the team on offense? We almost had some of that last week with Christian McCaffrey. Didn't he drop it five times? And every single time they ended up with the ball, either it fumbled out of bounds or his team recovered it. What that did do, though, it was a loss of five. And it brings up a fourth and long. Fourth and nine. Game on the line. Bears get it. Stay alive. If not, the Giants will win this crazy thing. See if the Giants decide to guard the sticks a little bit, but I don't know if Betcher's going to let it. James Betcher's going to let him lay back as much as he did on the last third down completion. Bears have to get to the 48. Blitz coming. Daniel in trouble. Just lets it fly. Going deep for Gabriel. Knocked away, and the Giants win it. Janoris Jenkins with the game saving play and in overtime the Giants with an exciting 30 to 27 win. He was trying to get it to Gabriel Jenkins was right there. What a game Giants hold on for the upset back to MetLife after this.